superhumans, with their extraordinary powers, suddenly appeared out of nowhere, along with their unique abilities that allowed them to take significant strides in life. Some chose to enhance their skills, utilizing their unique abilities to play an exceptional role in their respective fields. Others used their powers to work as hunters, fighting against monsters. Our protagonist had previously attempted a career as a hunter, but it seemed to be too much for him. He reluctantly gave up on his dream and returned home to start a new life as a farmer. In the end, he only wasted money on school fees, so he had to make his home prosperous. While he was busy finding ways to help his family, the protagonist unexpectedly developed an incredible passion for farming. He managed to channel his consciousness into his farming spirit, and he received a blessing from a retired farming expert. He was reborn as a spirit farmer, tasked with cultivating various crops. When his younger brother, Li Chan Wu, started a failed business, it forced their family to sell all their land to repay the debts. Jian Wu, knowing he was the breadwinner, worked even harder. He realized that simply planting mass crops wouldn't yield much profit. He needed to grow rare plants whose seeds could only be found underground. Obtaining them seemed impossible, but Jian Wu hoped to possess them to become wealthy. He sighed, but suddenly he noticed something strange coming from a sprout in the ground. Jian Wu then brought the small sprout home to show his parents, but only he could hear it. Father. Jian Wu provided a brief explanation to avoid raising suspicion. He believes in himself and thinks that the tree truly comforts and speaks to him. Jian Wu brought the sprout to the care area. The next day, he watered it and told many stories about the place, hoping it would become a special seed to help him in his struggle to live. When Gian Wu's father quickly left his job to deliver the harvest, with him, his father was able to earn more than 8 million won during this harvest season. But after deducting the costs of fertilizer and care, he only had a little left. Jian Wu then returned to the garden, but he saw a little girl rushing out to hug him. He looked surprised. Then a notice appeared on the system board. The seed he planted was this little girl. It was a spirit. Jian Wu has obtained the farmer spirit that gave him a pound of skills. However, upon examining it repeatedly, he found that he lacked fighting abilities. When the spirit girl saw Jian Wu, she ran to ask. And now he realizes that this young girl is named Hawa. Jian Wu was amazed when he saw Hawa's skill sheet and hoped that Hawa would do something special for him. Hawa quickly ran back to the sprout, using the experienced farmer's hand skill. With this skill, the tree touched by Hawa will grow very well, but Jian Wu wanted something that works immediately. Hawa understood what he meant. She took a deep breath and shouted loudly, surprising Jian Wu, thinking she just made a sound wave. He took Hawa home. When a strong wind appeared and something appeared right in front of him, Gian Wu used to be a hunter. His instinct told him it was dangerous and this was the style of a powerful spirit. Hawa had summoned the wind spirit. She immediately questioned them about why they called her. Jian Wu quickly thought to ask the wind spirit to help him plow this area. And luckily, they immediately accepted. After plowing the land, the wind spirit disappeared and Jian Wu breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, he did not get angry or Jian Wu would die. He then turned to face Hawa, who with her ability to summon spirits was so powerful, even more amazing than he thought. Jian Wu grinned and escorted Hawa home, telling her that today was enough, no need for skills, and he will learn more about Hawa. The next day, the notification board appeared again, and thanks to the help of the wind spirit, Jian Wu's skills were elevated to a higher level. Jian Wu brought Hawa home and told his parents about the recent storm, clearly caused by Hawa's ability to summon the wind spirit. However, after hearing this fabricated story, his parents were skeptical and planned to consult a psychiatrist. Jian Wu quickly devised a different plan to convince his mother by having her bathe Hawa. Meanwhile, he had to sit and endure his father's shouts. His father concluded that Jian Wu had kidnapped this sweet girl and ordered him to bring her back immediately. However, at that moment, his mother screamed in fear and rushed out to inform them that Hawa had no excretion. 
Only then did they start to believe Jian Wu's claim that Hawa was a spirit. A week had passed since Hawa entered Jian Wu's world, and he still didn't fully understand her. He only knew that Hawa ate a lot. So Jian Wu took her to a fast food eating contest, and Hawa devoured everything. As a result, Jian Wu was rewarded accordingly. Then, a spirit summoned by Hawa came to help Jian Wu with his farming. However, despite the fact that Hawa called upon this spirit, they only understood Jian Wu's words and didn't remember how Jian Wu started seeing them as telepathic partners who relied on each other to grow. While he was thinking about it, Hawa left and pulled up her sleeve. She had eaten all the potato cakes that Jian Wu had cooked, but she was still hungry. Jian Wu was still happy and cheerfully took her to the city to get more food. Before leaving Hawa and rushing back to his garden, to bid farewell to his plants, Jian Wu took her to a different city from her village. There were so many tall buildings that Hawa couldn't contain her excitement. But before she could go out and buy potato cakes, she was already going to the Adventurer's Union and signing up. Starting today, she would become an adventurer to have enough pocket money to cover Hawa's food. His biggest dream is to become an adventurer. However, he has failed the entrance test. This has happened too often, and this time is his last chance. Luckily, he managed to see his certificate. He couldn't contain his emotional feelings. Even though his ability is only for farming, it is more than enough. Hawa sees this and wants to try as well, but because she is a spirit, she cannot pass through it. Hawa is a little sad, but when she sees Gion Wu in a bad mood, she walks back to the motel and quickly regains her spirit. On that night, branch manager Baek Chian Su went to check the situation at the headquarters. When he heard a big argument, he walked to the other side. The two were involved and ordered them to stop the fake superpower. Su Jin and Jung Hyuk are the faces of the entire headquarters. But these two individuals behave like cats and dogs. They fight all day without setting a good example for the juniors, seeing that the manager has arrived. But they are still arguing loudly. Baek Cheon Su firmly orders them to stop and instead resolve their differences at the headquarters. They dragged each other to continue arguing. Baek Cheon Su was also helpless. He took a list of new superpower countries that joined the association. He checked it but didn't see anyone standing. This made him stressed because he had to nurture potential employees to move to higher management positions. But no one had ever caught his attention in the previous years. That, that night, Hawa wore some clothes that Jian Wu bought for her. She looked adorable. That everything looked good on Jian Wu made him a certificate similar to his own. And even though it was fake and blurry, it was enough to make Hawa happy. He then drew Hawa together for a photo. He fulfilled his dream of becoming a fake superpower country. But most importantly, Hawa had entered his world, and every smile from her warm heart. Jian Wu plans to bring Hawa out to harvest corn today. He is so adorable that Jian Wu connects to his phone to take a picture of him. His mother also keeps asking him to provide a photo of Hawa to use as a new wallpaper. This week, he has changed ten wallpapers. When Jian Wu's father sees them gathered together, he becomes upset and scolds them for being lazy. However, after they part ways, Jian Wu's father calls him back because he is jealous that he has not received a picture of Hawa yet. After seeing it, he becomes much more comfortable. They have harvested corn this time, and the quality is very good. So his father is confident that it will be better than Class C. However, there is no guarantee. So he is on his way to borrow a machine. When Jian Wu calls him back, they no longer need a meter because Jian Wu already has a system to evaluate the quality of agricultural products. And by doing so, they will save money on the cost of that pricing machine. But only Jian Wu can calculate the price. Therefore, he has to do it and shoulder all of this alone. When he looks back and doesn't see Hawa, any movement Jian Wu makes feels strange. Meanwhile, as he puffed up his mouth and dragged the large pile of corn back to its place, Jian Wu nervously ran to help and check the quality of the corn crop. And as soon as he opened his bag, the bright light shining towards Jian Wu surprised him. Realizing that the amount of corn in the bag had a premium quality in the market, the corn was worth ten times more. That night, Jian Wu brought a stack of delicious premium corn to boil and eat, and just the smell made the whole family drool. 
They waited for the corn stack to finish before rushing in to try it. And then the whole family exploded because it tasted much better than any corn they had ever eaten. One corn was not enough, so Jian Wu kept boiling more. After a while, they consumed half of the premium corn. It was not only extraordinary, but also permanently increased the statistics for their pseudo-abilities. If the world knew this, it would be truly crazy. He couldn't tell them about this corn crop. He would be in danger. Today is the festival and Jian Wu invited Hawa to come here to play. He also asked the shop owner to sell the freshly picked corn. Jian Wu anticipated that it would be crowded, but he didn't expect it to be so crowded. When Hawa was surprised and jumped into Jian Wu's lap due to a loud noise, he laughed and pointed her towards the court. Far away, people with fake abilities could showcase their greatness. He used to want to stand on this platform. Hawa was too short to be seen, so Jian Wu followed his father's lead, stood beside him and carried the girl on his shoulder to get a better view. He really wanted to be on that stage, but not anymore, because he now has something more important. Jung Hyuk was running around the guild. While the auction for fake abilities was taking place, he tried to find something that would quickly enhance his abilities, to quickly increase his combat power to defeat Su Jin. But today, he could only last for an hour by eating some Class B potatoes. If only he could find a way to permanently increase his index. Jian Wu was taken aback by Su Jin's appearance. He knew what she was thinking and followed her. He intended to buy everything worth buying in this auction. When Jung Hyuk saw a group of people chatting, he thought it was something valuable. However, Su Jin disagreed. She questioned why they would sell it here. If it was valuable, she took a closer look at the table and realized it was a great A-plus corn. Even more terrifying because it permanently increased user statistics. It was exactly what she needed. Before Jung Hyuk realized it, Su Jin took out her card and wanted to buy all the corn. Within minutes, Jian Wu's corn had sold out, and the seller called to give him the surprising news. However, Jian Wu needed to reiterate that the seller must not reveal that he was the one who planted it, and that he had to ensure the safety of the atmosphere completely. After selling all the corn, he intended to hold a party tonight. But first, he had to think about how to plant the beauty seeds given by the village chief earlier. Beauty seeds are plants found in underground prisons and are considered the most elegant hair growth remedy. Today, the process of planting these plants is a secret that very few people know. However, Jian Wu is not an ordinary person, so he still knows the best way to plant these plants. The only problem is that beauty seeds only bloom when exposed to poison. A type of animal called a promo mango is quite difficult. So Jian Wu intends to plant other seeds first. Suddenly, a status board appears, assigning him to successfully plant this plant. So Jian Wu has to find that monster to farm. And he also takes this opportunity to invite Hawa to travel around the country. While he was on the way, Class A plus corn was advertised on television. And the most famous food critic was invited to taste its deliciousness. In addition, the famous chef Zhang Su was also invited to cook the corn. However, he also has fake superpowers that he must perform tasks with. Zhang Su has risen with his abilities for a year, but the forgotten chef never acknowledged him before this. He really wants to show off all his abilities for everyone to see. When Zhang Su starts processing the added corn, its own smell makes the food critics drool. They try it and praise it repeatedly, but Zhang Hyuk and Su Jin complain that the taste of the dish is not even as good as when it was raw. Jiang Su is humiliated, and the forgotten chef punishes him. Over and over again until he realizes his mistake, and he has one more chance to do it again. But this time, Jiang Su just boiled the legendary corn. But Jian Wu doesn't even know anything. Jian Wu and Hawa embarked on a national excursion to find the animal carcass while enjoying a meal. Three weeks later, Jian Wu returned with a pile of animal carcasses. His father wanted to know why he brought them and was about to touch them. Jian Wu quickly intervened as these wild animal carcasses were still highly toxic. This angered his father who scolded Jian Wu for causing a mess. However, after hearing his explanation, his father patted his shoulder to encourage him and decided to let him make the decision because he was the breadwinner of the family. Jian Wu then called Hawa, who was playing with cows. 
Hawa called upon the wind spirit to help her plant seeds. Although Jian Wu wore a mask, he was still a little afraid of the poison. So the wind spirit would help blow away the poison and plant the seeds. It was quite simple to insert into the beast's body. Jian Wu took Hawa home after completing everything they had planned for today's barbecue. While the family enjoyed the meal, a bulletin board appeared informing Jian Wu that he had been awarded a fertile piece of land for accepting the farmer spirit's task. The next morning, he took Hawa to the park again, remembering what had happened the day before. But Jian Wu still did not understand that the gift was a piece of fertile land. But the land was now owned by the government. He couldn't buy it, so how could he use it? Jian Wu was shocked when he arrived at the park to find that all the monster bodies had disappeared. What had happened? While Hawa found a halo out there, she didn't know what it was and kept running. He couldn't let Hawa go alone, risking her life to enter it and be transported to another room, where everything was land for her to cultivate. Jian Wu was stunned to hear a greeting and turned to see a little girl flying around him. He greeted Jian Wu and introduced himself as the guardian fairy of the agricultural dungeon. The little fairy cried because Jian Wu mistook her for an insect. So Hawa reached out to touch the girl's head to calm her down, and the girl immediately recognized Hawa as a spirit. Upon hearing Hawa's name, the girl said that it was a very beautiful name, but then she remembered that she didn't have a name to introduce herself, so she cried again. After crying, she explained to them again that she was a fairy whose duty was to protect this agricultural land. And she illustrated it to Jian Wu. How it works. This is a unique land that is different from other lands, especially in this area because the land will thrive with Jian Wu. And he can plant any plants he likes, regardless of how stubborn the land is. He listened to her explanation for a while but still didn't understand anything. So. He just hummed and had a question. Jian Wu's only fear was that the government would take over the land. However, the little spirit girl laughed and patted his chest, confidently stating that as long as Jian Wu had her permission, no one could enter this area. Jian Wu didn't believe it. As he looked at the vast land in front of him, he thought it was all his. Meanwhile, the wind played with the spirit girl again. After a while, the wind returned and asked Jian Wu to play with her. But at this point, he realized that the spirit girl didn't have a name. As a result, he quickly found that name. When Elle heard the name, she thought it was very beautiful and agreed to use it. Suddenly, announcement boards began to appear. Jian Wu gave a good name to this fairy land. Thus, the soul of the land was approved as a new warrior. And Elle's magic, which had been completely restored, transformed her from being as small as an insect to becoming larger like the wind. Elle approached Jian Wu once again to welcome him, telling him that she would now be responsible for taking care of him and determining the beauty of his tree. After some time, completely absorbing the body of another animal without leaving any trace, it was in line with his expectations of the planting. They were on the carcass of another animal. At least it should produce something like this. Of course, it was not perfect with its slightly weak stem, so Jian Wu had to build something to support it. And because this was a rare plant, what he had to do then was to pay more attention to it. Jian Wu turned on the bulletin board and glanced at the tree that clearly stated that when it grew to about one meter in height, he only planted it for a week, and it had already exceeded the standard. How could this plant grow so quickly? Elle returned at this time to boast about her achievement, because the stack of trees had grown like this because she had taken care of it. Jian Wu rubbed Elle's head with praise, making Elle feel embarrassed so she hurried back to her place. The atmosphere to continue playing with the others was set aside, and Jian Wu played with the two children. While he was still having fun, Jung Hyuk and Su Jin were still standing in front of the entrance to the underground prison, which they would enter to hunt. When the union manager appeared and stopped them, he said that the association had bought this underground prison land, so no one could access it. Upon hearing that, Jung Hyuk and Su Jin joyfully escaped. However, there was another hunter who remained at the entrance. Because the contents of the underground prison were very valuable, 
When they were inside and when they ran out, they were no longer under the authority of the association, so the hunter could obtain it. There were horned rabbits in this underground prison, and their horns were very valuable. So the association could not ignore a large amount of money because of the weak but aggressive nature of the horned rabbits. Hunting them was quite easy. Of course, there were exceptions with the herd of horned rabbits. And while their teammates were still fighting, there were two rabbits that left everything behind and immediately fled. On Gion Wu's side, after playing tag with two children, he sat down and panted, and his physical strength could not compete with the children. In the following days, Jian Wu continued to take care of his land. This time, he was confident that the quality would be excellent because he had worked hard for this season. Jian Wu heard a scream and suddenly became worried that something had happened to Hawa. He rushed to check on her. He found Hawa crying because her area had been completely destroyed by something that reminded her of her own childhood. When his own field had been destroyed by hair, it made sense that Hawa would cry now. Jian Wu hugged her and persuaded her to replant. When he heard a sound from the nearby bushes, Jian Wu saw a horned rabbit. It jumped out and stared at him angrily. He wouldn't let it come near, but Jian Wu could tell what kind of animal it was just by looking at it. What surprised him was that he could understand what it was saying. It predicted that he would be able to hear the voices of animals. In this way, the system assigned Jian Wu a task at that moment. He needed to find a family for this horned rabbit. But Jian Wu refused. This was a type of animal that could be dangerous to Hawa. He regretted refusing, but Hawa wanted to help the horned rabbit see up close. There was another horned rabbit behind Jian Wu, observing it. She was in the process of giving birth. It seemed like she was uncomfortable and having difficulty. The horned rabbit refused to let Jian Wu approach, so Jian Wu had to explain to her. After receiving his approval, Jian Wu immediately starts assisting in the birth of the female horned rabbit. The delivery process is completed before dark. The male horned rabbit expresses his gratitude to Jian Wu by willingly allowing him to eat it. However, Jian Wu refuses this offer because he is the father of the young ones. Therefore, he cannot commit suicide like this. Jian Wu then makes an offer that the herd will now stay with his family. He will take care of the entire herd, led by Jian Wu. He feels a little anxious about introducing the new members to him. When he finds out that they are wild animals, the children quickly become friends. The next step is to create a habitat for the horned rabbits. Jian Wu turned to ask the horned rabbits how they live outside. In the wild, horned rabbits often dig burrows or live in bushes. So Jian Wu immediately assessed the situation and asked Hawa to call upon the earth spirits. He asked them to help him build a stone tower as tall as he is. Having seen many TV shows with superheroes who often employ earth spirits to create new things. But that's just on TV. Jian Wu let them go. He will build a burrow for the horned rabbits. The horned rabbits tried it for him. But it seemed unappealing, so Jian Wu built a burrow for them. Hawa hugged the horned rabbits, while Jian Wu stood there feeling his soul healed by the cuteness of the children. On TV that night, it was revealed that the hair growth supplement was faulty and that one of the serious side effects of the drug was tailbones growing along with the hair and piercing the skin. Ella knelt down to apologize. She claimed that she had approached the extraordinary plant leaf out of curiosity about what she had planted. But Jian Wu laughed and reassured her that it was okay because he had to discard it due to the side effects of the drug. He then turned to look for the horned rabbits. The lead rabbit ran towards Jian Wu, showing off its surprising new fur. What is this? Its fur had already grown thick and messy. It no longer looked like a horned rabbit at all. Jian Wu had seen an advertisement for hair growth pills on TV and thought people were exaggerating, so he didn't expect the results to be this bad. With untested plants like this. Hearing about the side effects, he knelt down to apologize to Jian Wu. It's good that he admitted it but he still warned him not to cause such a mess in the future. After apologizing, Hawa and Ella left, so he could talk to the horned rabbit. Hawa obeyed and ran, while Ella still felt very guilty. Gian Wu laughed because this little girl was very sensitive, so he knelt down to comfort and encourage her. Finally, Ella regained her composure and started playing with Hawa. 
Next is this horned rabbit that seems to enjoy its newly grown fur. But Jian Wu quickly brought scissors to cut its fur. He then observed the rabbit for a while, noting that besides its fur, there were no other side effects. But upon closer inspection, he found that the rabbit's horns had grown back, although the horned rabbit itself was not aware of this yet. Now Jian Wu remembered that the side effects of the medicine were to stimulate bone formation. Who would have thought that it would allow this horned rabbit to regrow their horns? A business idea crossed his mind. If the horned rabbit that had eaten the leaves of the masterpiece tree could regrow their horns, he could cut them and sell them without having to continue taking care of the masterpiece tree. Jian Wu turned to face Hawa and El, who were laughing and having fun. At the request of Hawala, he helped save the horned rabbits. He also fed them. Thus, he learned about this big business, because these children are the most precious people in his life. Jian Wu came and hugged them. While the children were playing outside, Jian Wu sat in the corner and thought that he no longer needed to worry about the negative effects of this masterpiece tree. Suddenly, a bulletin board appeared asking him to completely eliminate the negative effects of this tree. Jian Wu turned around to see the fruits and leaves of the masterpiece tree, all of which were top-grade agricultural products. Or better yet, if not for the negative impact of this valuable object, he would become rich. Jian Wu intended to seek help from an expert, but he remembered that he did not know any experts, so he had to experiment on his own. Jian Wu first burned the masterpiece fruit to see if anything strange happened. But nothing happened and he even damaged the top-grade tree fruit. Jian Wu did not give up and experimented several more times, but it was all in vain. A large number of masterpiece fruits were damaged, and he now felt futile. Jian Wu turned to look at the horned rabbits and called them back. He wanted to cut the horns on their heads to study them. The wind calls upon the spirit to mesmerize Hawa. However, she loses her precious newly grown horns, causing the horned rabbit to cry. Meanwhile, Jian Wu is amazed by these horns. Their quality reaches grade A, surpassing the rank that the wild horned rabbit could never achieve. But he can possess them, and as long as he mass produces them, he will become a billionaire. Jian Wu gazes at Hawa, who is comforting the unhappy horned rabbit, realizing that he was almost blinded by money. He saves the horned rabbit from using it for business purposes. Meanwhile, Chef Jong Su accepts a significant breach of contract to leave his workplace, as being here only hinders his progress. Jong Su leaves. Meanwhile, his first mission is to find someone who can produce top quality agricultural products. Since horned rabbits are easily hunted, the price of their products is quite high. There are many gatherings near the entrance to the area where they live. Jian Wu also came here to sell some horns he had just harvested. That day, he performed a general operation on the horned rabbits. Thanks to their cooperation, everything went smoothly without any problems. However, contrary to his expectations, the last horn had much lower quality than the leader's horn. This made Jian Wu assume that horned rabbits were unique. But there was no evidence at all, so he could only wait and watch. Of course, he tried to sell the premium horns, but people were so confused that he was too overwhelmed to sell. So Jian Wu stopped selling and waited for the next auction to sell. He was too preoccupied with his thoughts to pay attention to the atmosphere any longer. But when he was drawn to the smell of the nearest stall, Jian Wu went to see what he was selling. He wasn't too interested, but the smell was too tempting. He had tried horned rabbit meat before, but it was too rotten, yet the smell insisted on him eating it. Zhang Su, the owner of this stall, hoped that the first customer to make a purchase would help him resolve the situation. Because there were rumors that horned rabbit meat was not very appetizing, and no matter how enticing the smell was, he would just stand outside and watch. He brought Hawa to the store to buy horned rabbit satay skewers. He held the meat satay skewers in his hand. They enjoyed it together, and then both shivered. Jian Wu exclaimed that it was too delicious, and continued to eat causing doubts from other customers to be resolved. They then flocked to Zhang Su's store. After eating, Jian Wu brought Hawa back to the farm. After eating meat satay, 
Hawa watched the horned rabbits and even drooled with them, which made Jian Wu consider taking her out to eat again. Finally, the day to harvest the sweet potatoes arrived. The entire Jian Wu family went together. Jian Wu worked while cosplaying, with an air of pointing out the spirits working like real soldiers. This made his father feel that Jian Wu was behaving too childishly. After some time, they successfully dug up every potato. And upon seeing them, Jian Wu felt that he couldn't contain his smile. His father was relieved that they had overcome this crop and had a strong foundation to regain their lost land. Because he said that, Jian Wu remembered his sister and wondered if she was okay lately. Turning around, he saw Hawa preparing the containers for the potatoes she had planted herself. Jian Wu hurriedly stopped Hawa because he didn't want her to get hurt at all. He checked the stack of potatoes that Hawa had planted. Once again, it was top quality grade A+. Plus. A few days later, he didn't sell grade A plus potatoes, but he had already made a lot of money. The day before, Jian Wu excitedly took Hawa to the skewered meat stall. Since the day they arrived to taste the food, Zhang Su's stall had never been so crowded. Jian Wu really wanted to come back to this place to enjoy this dish once again. And the smell coming from the stall made their mouths water. When it was finally their turn, Jian Wu happily took Hawa to the counter to buy the skewered meat. Jian Wu's parents had to leave the house for a few days, but they felt uncomfortable because they didn't immediately see Hawa. His father asked Hawa to go with them. However, she refused because she didn't want to leave Jian Wu alone. Therefore, she chose to stay at home with him. When Jian Wu was alone at home in the past, he would meditate. But now he didn't need to. He hurried to the kitchen to boil potatoes and brought them to L. To enjoy the A-plus potatoes was enough to be sold, so they could have as many as they wanted. And at the next auction, Jian Wu would sell the A-plus potatoes there. However, the auction house was quite far away, and he also needed to buy a monster corpse to plant a masterpiece tree. Jian Wu didn't know what to do first. This time, Jian Wu baked the potatoes before taking them out to L. While doing so, he saw Hawa playing with a cow. He smiled and urged her to quickly let the cow back into its pen, because if anyone saw her riding a cow like this, they would faint. After playing for a while, the cow's hair was already covered with her body. He handed a bag of potatoes to her. Hawa flicked the cow's hair, and then they left immediately. The smell coming from the bag made Hawa thirsty along the way, but there was still L's part. So Hawa couldn't eat now. They were ready to leave when Zhang Su approached them. He bowed and pleaded with Zhang Wu to let him cook the surprising potatoes, because he didn't know how Zhang Su knew the ranking of Zhang Wu's potatoes. He brought Zhang Su into the new house now. Zhang Su reintroduced himself as a superhuman chef, which explained why he didn't do it. There was no need for a meter to determine the ranking of the potatoes. He invited Zhang Su to eat the freshly boiled potatoes. Then he reached for John Wu's hand and begged him to let him handle John Wu's agricultural products. Zhang Su naturally made an offer, and as a result of this meeting, production and trade of horned rabbits, Jian Wu is able to produce in a more stable way little by little. Jian Wu's problem is being solved, but there is still one big problem that needs to be addressed, the increasing number of horned rabbits, because he cannot trim their fur or cut their horns. Ella runs to offer her help. However, Jian Wu disagrees, because she might accidentally cut the ears of the horned rabbits and hurt them. On the other hand, he is confident enough because of his ability to imitate Jian Wu's skills and imitate exactly what Jian Wu does. Reminded by her words and seeing Elle's hopeful expression, he agrees and then catches a horned rabbit for her to try. Finally, she succeeds because Hawa sees this. She takes the scissors and wants to help her. But Jian Wu rubs his head and denies it, because Hawa doesn't have the same skills as him. So she can't do it perfectly to trim the fur of all the horned rabbits. Thanks to El's help, however, there is still a problem that he needs to worry about, which is Hawa sulking. Currently, this is the first time the weather is like this. So Gian Wu is confused about what to do. However, Jian Wu invites her to a very interesting place, where she would be happy to go. The weather is once again very cheerful. So Jian Wu takes her to Jiang Su's newly opened restaurant. 
Jiangsu is confident in its popularity and doesn't need to worry about the number of customers. But more importantly, he built the restaurant here so that he could allow Jian Wu to cook the highest ranked potatoes and farm products as accurately as possible. Jian Wu feels a little uncomfortable with this agreement. Because Jiang Su only takes two portions and the rest is all for Jian Wu. However, for Jiang Su, being able to prepare a dish from the highest ranked farm products is enough to make him happy. So he doesn't regret his offer. They do business together. And now it's time for Jiang Su to complete his task. His reward is the process of creating the most perfect masterpiece. Jian Wu is surprised when she hears about it. He also wants to know if Zhang Su can send him the process of making the masterpiece tree. To do this, he needs to use rock bee honey, although he already has the recipe. It's still a bit difficult for Jian Wu because he doesn't have a laboratory. Almost all the ingredients needed, like rock honey, are also very expensive for him, while Jian Wu is still thinking of a solution. Zhang Su is getting ready to open his restaurant. He invites manager Beck and the last two superhumans. It's time to apologize for his previous mistakes. Zhang Su promises not to make the same mistake again. Today's menu will be the most perfect for him. The three of them eat the first dish. But Manager Beck is not very interested in it because of the upcoming global cooking competition. He is looking forward to Zhang Su's 1% dish, which is very delicious. It also has a percentage that allows superhumans to instantly improve their skills. Zhang Su laughs. He won't make that dish again. Then comes the main dish. Zhang Su brings a dish made from delicious A plus potatoes. Just by smelling it, Manager Beck's saliva instantly increases. The skill level of this user makes Manager Beck sweat. Isn't this a 1% dish? Your brother just introduced them to them again. This is not 1%, but 10%. From now on, it will follow the seasonal menu, with his restaurant making the three of them feel terrified. Ten extraordinary. After enjoying and leaving the restaurant, the world starts talking about this dish, so his restaurant has a long queue. They wait a long time just to enjoy this dish, but only those who stand up quickly have a chance to enjoy it. Because the ingredients from the A-plus potatoes are limited, Zhang Su's restaurant has to work better than Jian Wu expected. The end of the harvest season marked the arrival of winter in Jian Wu's fertile land. The cold air made people on the streets feel their breath. Farming was not possible during this season. However, Jian Wu still had work to do. He and his two children built a new, warmer hutch for their horned rabbit family. They huddled together and ran into the new hutch, which looked like a giant cotton ball. It was so soft that Hawa and El jumped without feeling the cold. The two children were adorable, and Gaon Wu couldn't resist. He took out his phone to take some pictures. As he opened the photo album, he realized that he had taken too many pictures of the children and none of their parents. He just needed to take more pictures of them. Gion Wu then returned to his tent to finish his diary entry about his farming methods. After receiving expert advice on tree processing from Zhang Su, he started practicing. Now it was time for him to check the results. The completion message for the search was sent. This time, the reward was a farmer's uniform. When Gion Wu touched it, his whole body glowed, surprising him. And before he could prepare himself mentally, his entire body transformed into the uniform on its own. It looked ordinary, but after wearing it, he no longer felt the cold here. Moreover, it was so soft that Jian Wu thought it must be very valuable. Hawa and Ele were curious and touched the uniform, and they were also surprised. Jian Wu reminded the children not to touch it. After saying that, he realized he shouldn't have said those words. Suddenly, two flying lights appeared towards Hawa and Ele. The two children also received the uniform. They looked incredibly cute, so Jian Wu had to take pictures with his phone again. He was so engrossed in playing with them that he even forgot to finish his masterpiece tree. Jian Wu could become rich in an instant just by completing this masterpiece tree. But the path there was somewhat difficult for him. Even though he tried to follow the recipe, the end result was not what he had hoped for. There were still too many side effects on the masterpiece tree that made its quality worse, after he made it. But at least he wasn't completely defeated, before the horned rabbit never ate the fruit from the masterpiece tree. But after it was made tastier, 
they ate non-stop. Hawa also wanted to eat it. But of course, Jian Wu was threatened that if he ate it, his head would grow horns like a rabbit, making Hawa afraid to ask again. Next is the leaf prepared with honey stone. Although the horned rabbit failed when drinking it, its fur would not grow back like before. That saved Jian Wu's effort to cut their hair. After finishing his work, here, Jian Wu took Hawa home. Today, his whole family gathered to make kimchi together. Thanks to Chef Zhang Su's support, the speed of making kimchi was very fast. After that, they celebrated together and enjoyed their work. They had just made a piece of kimchi in Zhang Su's hand and saw that it was only Class C. But the taste was special, unlike anything he had ever tasted before. Today, he learned something new again. The product didn't say anything. After the party ended, Jian Wu's parents also packed a piece of kimchi to take home, as if he came to help them with their family. Today was fun with Jian Wu's family. So he almost forgot that today was to pay for the A-plus suite provided by Jian Wu. Jian Wu received an envelope from Zhang Su and eagerly opened it, surprised to count every zero on the check. He touched this large amount of money for the first time in his life. There was a famous alchemist in Yongwal, Gangwon province. His name was a culter. The poison he created contained beneficial effects that people always sought after. However, there was no information about the person or the shadow itself, which made people speculate that he was a wise person from another era. But in reality, the one hiding was just a little girl. A girl who saw her body like that. She was actually 30 years old. 20 years ago, she was considered a superhuman at a young age. Thanks to the alchemist's blessing, she learned many unreasonable methods of treatment. One of them was a medicine called eternal youth. And maintaining beauty for women is the easiest way to make money. She presented herself as a test subject. It worked, but it was also a kind of curse. When she drank it at a young age, so her body could no longer grow and remained small forever. To break this curse, for years she always found ways to make growth potions. Spring has come to Gion Wu's farmland. In the new year, Ele and Hawa have grown one year older. In just ten years, they will become young girls, which he also looks forward to. Gion Wu asked them to play together while he worked. This year, he will try to grow chili peppers, a very difficult plant that brings disaster to farmers' backs. It's difficult, but according to his intelligence, he knows that this year chili will be the most potential. The food he reviewed was what happened last year. Class A plus corn, sweet potatoes, and Class S masterpiece trees. He was able to grow high-ranking plants like this thanks to the energy from this cultivated land. So Gian Wu is confident that the chili peppers will also reach a high rank. When opening the warehouse door, Ella suddenly screamed that there was a thief. The group went out to see a goblin stealing their crops. Throughout this time, El has been the guardian of this land, and no one can enter unless there is an entity that breaks through El's protection. The group chasing the other goblins saw them stop, making Gion Wu look a little pale. Because goblins are very aggressive monsters, they are ready to attack anyone who threatens them. After scaring Gion Wu, they continued to jump and flee. Gion Wu couldn't follow them and jumped into the space portal, disappearing. El cried and apologized for not being able to protect the land well. Jian Wu smiled and patted her head to comfort her that it's okay. Next time, they will be more careful. Then Jian Wu went online to search for information about other goblins. There is a story about a golden goblin who always carries a large treasure bag, because this goblin is very difficult to catch. Almost no one notices it when it enters. According to El's words, it is likely that the goblin outranks her so he can enter this area. To prevent such a thing from happening again, Jian Wu locked the agricultural warehouse. Suddenly, he pulled the boy's shirt and gave him a cocoon. Jian Wu looked surprised that this was the cocoon of a queen bee. It came at the right time, when he needed it. This is what the goblin dropped while fleeing. Jian Wu brought the queen bee cocoon back home and began to think this was a great opportunity for him. But the thought of raising another beast species made Jian Wu a little worried. He quickly realized again. He had successfully raised a horned rabbit. 
There is no reason not to raise a stone bee. This animal does not cause much damage so it can still be kept. The cocoon was about to break. Jayan Wu panicked and immediately took it to the farmland. The stone bee queen broke out of its shell. Jian Wu was not mentally prepared. However, today a new member came to his family. Hawa and El were very excited, making the frightened queen hide in Gian Wu's body. He had to remind the two girls to be quiet again. The stone bee queen flew into the sky and began to chirp, and El heard it, and realized that this cry was somewhat sad. This bee queen called her kind. In a beehive, when a new bee queen is born, she will bring some other worker bees to build another hive for herself. But Jian Wu accidentally took her cocoon. There are no other stone bees here, and no other bee queen flying around looking for stones to build a hive. But nothing can be done here. Because it was so unexpected that Jian Wu didn't have time to prepare to comfort her. Jian Wu took out processed stone honey to be tried by the bee queen. Fortunately, this suited her taste and desire. The mood is much better. After that, Jian Wu asked the queen bee to try biting his hand. The queen bee didn't understand much, but if she asked, she would bite Jian Wu's finger with all her might. But it seems to have no effect, all thanks to the uniform he was wearing. It blocked all the damage the queen bee did to him. So this bee couldn't hurt Ile and Hawa. If that's the problem, then he can raise them in this farmland. What the queen bee saw was that it couldn't attack Jian Wu, and she started to get scared and retreat. She then asked Hawa to call the earth spirit to come here, which she still had to repeat, because she was afraid that the terrifying storm spirit would run here and destroy the entire field. Hawa took a breath and screamed as if it was the last time. A shockwave was released, making Jian Wu still a little scared of the approaching female spirit. This time, a different stone flew in front of their eyes. Someone stepped out of the stone effortlessly like the wind. At that moment, the earth spirit appeared. He was handsome like a real person. In order to build a honeycomb for the stone honeybees, Jian Wu asked the air to summon a powerful earth spirit to come. The summoned earth spirit turned around and asked what was wrong. The air waved at him, but was ignored. This was the first time he had been ignored like this. It made the air very sad. Jian Wu looked towards Ele, who was also very scared of what was summoned. He asked Jian Wu repeatedly, and then Jian Wu lost his patience. The earth spirit was asked to create a suitable stone for the queen bee to nest. The simple thing he gave to him was that the ground began to shake violently. Giant stone pillars began to grow bigger and bigger. Jian Wu's face turned green until a bulletin board appeared. He realized it. He was at the same level as the last anti-wind spirit, but he spoke too lightly with him. Fortunately, this person was friendlier than the anti-wind spirit. Actually, Jian Wu had faced a presence as big as this before, immediately left. The stone queen happily flew to the newly made stone pillar and began building a new nest for herself. One month passed just like that. And Gian Wu asked the spirit of the earth enthusiastically to bring food for the queen bee of the stone bees. Although the earth spirit was not his enemy every time he thought about it, Jian Wu's mind was very tired. Since the stone pillar was erected, the queen bee had never left the hive, which made El and Hawa very worried. When Gian Wu saw this, he laughed and bowed to explain to the two girls. It was not because the queen bee was feeling unwell but she was still working very hard. To make the two girls understand her better, Jian Wu asked them to come closer to the hive. And they looked closer at the whole swarm of stone bees flying in front of them. And now, Jian Wu is ready to start breeding stone bees. Jian Wu commanded a group of chimpanzees to dig burrows along the road he had passed. Other farmers had witnessed many of these scenes, and they named this land Spirit Farming. In fact, these spirits were not as powerful as they thought. So initially, Jian Wu had to work hard to train them. When Gian Wu asked them to remove the weeds, they also moved the corpses, and to plow as well. If Jian Wu didn't draw the line for them, it would be a big mess. That's why he didn't let them use their own devices. Hawa brought her parents to Jian Wu and asked him to tell her parents to bring cake. But only Jian Wu understood what Hawa meant. However, 
Her parents should not have opinions that lead to fierce arguments. Jian Wu immediately asked Hawa to redeem her grandparents. They should not argue in front of him like that. To make the family more united, today Gian Wu will take everyone to Zhang Su's restaurant to enjoy his cooking. Jian Wu took them to the restaurant, but when they arrived, he saw that the queue was very long. The number of people queuing was too crowded. But Jian Wu didn't join the queue. Instead, he ran straight to the front. It made everyone look hostile towards him. Only after Zhang Su came out to pick them up could he enter, because those people were very scary. Hawa almost cried, and to make her happier, Zhang Su immediately brought out today's menu for everyone to enjoy. At first, Jian Wu's parents were a little embarrassed. However, when they smelled the aroma coming from the food, they immediately stopped feeling embarrassed. Zhang Su then brought out sweet potatoes for everyone to enjoy. Jian Wu was like a benefactor, so he saved some to cook for everyone. But the small amount made the atmosphere slightly disappointed. So Zhang Su brought another pile for everyone. When Gian Wu ate it, there was an explosion of flavor in his mouth. With this magical taste, he even competed for the atmosphere's portion. Meanwhile, outside the occulter shop, the manager and his assistant came to this restaurant. They saw a very long line. They didn't want to wait, so they missed the opportunity to eat there. Then at that moment, Jian Wu's family came out, and they crossed paths with each other. They did not know that this meeting was fate. Gian Wu took Hawa out to the park. Today, the flowers had started to bloom. The weather was also perfect for enjoying the outdoors. Jian Wu decided to take some cute photos of himself. They went to the farmland together. Hawa spotted some bumblebees and waved at them. Jian Wu was surprised to see how the bees could be here. Jian Wu took Hawa to El, who was watching a swarm of bumblebees. Jian Wu had just arrived and turned around to see what confused Ella. He couldn't immediately say that the bees had flown out. Otherwise, Ella would kneel down and apologize to him. According to Ella, the bumblebees had been active since morning, collecting honey. She even counted the number of bumblebees, and now there were more of them than horned rabbits. Jian Wu was shocked by the fact that there were around 50 horned rabbits. But the bumblebees outnumbered them. Jian Wu only now realizes his mistake. The stone bees collect nectar to survive. But in this cultivated land, there are no flowers for them. This is his fault. Stone bees are not dangerous animals, but they can easily pose a danger to those around them when he saw such a large bee. So Jian Wu brought the air to the stone bee's nest. He asked it to call the earth spirit and commanded it to enter and called the queen bee. After waiting for a while, of course, a bee flew out, seeing its size much larger than the others. This must be a warrior. But Jian Wu had to meet the queen. So the warrior used the excuse that the queen was giving birth. So it acted on behalf of the queen. Jian Wu asked it to deliver a message to the queen bee. He asked them not to attack any humans when they go out to collect honey, to flee first. Because when they attack people, the experts will surely come here to catch them. It understood and returned to the cave, because it still knew how to greet when it came out to meet Jian Wu. He was confident that he would understand what he was saying. This is the perfect temperature for planting. It's scorching hot here, with the wind and L also peeking in. They don't want to miss any stage of development. This makes Jian Wu burst into laughter and pat them both. He praises them both. Those who go to the children's farming competition will surely win especially L, who can call so many helpers. It's even hard for adults to win. After Jian Wu takes Hawa and leaves L to take care of the farm, the horned rabbit runs around hungry. Before he remembers, it's already lunchtime. Ella runs to prepare food for the horned rabbit. Then she sits down to enjoy the lunchbox prepared by Jian Wu. He even left a thank you note that L doesn't understand what he wrote. After returning, Jian Wu and Hawa continue to work until evening and finish everything. But Jian Wu feels like time is moving a bit slowly today. Zhang Su calls to discuss something with him. The last time his family came to eat at his restaurant, after they left, there were other guests who asked him to tell them the recipe for the amazing tree. Zhang Su doesn't know how to handle it. So he calls to ask Jian Wu's opinion. Then Jian Wu laughs and reminds him to do what he likes. After all, it's not his. 
but he has the right to forbid him from showing it to others. After hanging up, Jian Wu takes Hawa back to his house. At this point, nothing is more important than Hawa. A few days later in the village hall, Hawa and other children dance for the adults, while waiting for the village head to arrive today. He calls everyone here to discuss the recent strange appearance of bees. Jian Wu is surprised to hear this. Why are they discussing bees here? Jian Wu remembers to inform the bees very carefully not to attack people. He believes that they understand. And what the village chief wants to convey to the community is just to remind them to be more cautious around bees. There have been no attacks yet. It's just that the National Bee Farm will only teach them about a new species of bees. He hopes that anyone interested will come to the class. It is very fortunate that Jian Wu is raising this colony of rock bees, and carefully he plans how to take care of them. Events like this will help him understand how to care for their species. However, when he arrives there, the class seems to lack interest. This makes Jian Wu a little sad. Currently, the head waiter of the night is escorting the woman into the classroom. He chooses to sit next to Jian Wu. He finds the girl to be very cute, so he can't stop staring at her. He is solely focused on her presence at the moment. Hawa takes out the diploma that he made for her. He doesn't understand why there is a spirit. And Jian Wu is surprised. Fortunately, Hawa appears to be human. But if they were to find out that Hawa is a spirit, he would be in danger. Jian Wu reminds Hawa to draw a picture for him. He specifically allows Hawa to draw and pose beautifully. Hawa takes out his pen and finishes his work just a few minutes later. Jian Wu looks at it carefully first, but with each dot, he adds it to the picture. When another girl sees it, she bursts into laughter. When she sees the picture emitting an undeniable aura of affection, she immediately bursts into laughter. The night butler quickly brings out a photo frame for the woman. He is a skilled household assistant. The knight always prepares what the woman needs. Then he wants to hug Hawa. Hawa eagerly runs into his arms. At first, Jian Wu thought she would be difficult to approach, but now he has to think again. Instructor Myung Han finally arrives. The lecture begins shortly after. In the lecture hall, Professor Myung Han delivered his lecture with more enthusiasm than usual. He was straight to the point. Myung Han heard the news that there was a talented man sitting in his class. If he performed well, he might even be recruited by their company. After the lecture, Gyeon Wu and Hawa bid him farewell and left. Although during the lecture, he only pointed at Hawa, Myung Han said everything he knew well. According to him, everything he said was wrong and not worth their investment. What he cared about was getting Jian Wu's phone number. During the lecture, it seemed that Jian Wu had prior understanding of this male bee species. When he thought that the stone bee was a hermaphrodite, he didn't think about it at all until the woman reminded him on the way back. Jian Wu bought some flashcards to teach children, but it was quite difficult for him. Hawa only learned words but couldn't pronounce complete sentences, and L always put the word Ada, there is, in front of every answer. He turned around in confusion to see the horned rabbit, he didn't play with his rabbit and ran over here. The horned rabbit puffed up its chest confidently, thinking that the horned rabbit wasn't tall enough to play with it. Jian Wu soon realized that this male rabbit was bigger than the others. Moreover, it was also very intelligent. It was definitely a special child. He let him learn letters with Hawa and El. In the following days, he worked very hard to teach Hawa. He put on his own thick coat and went to meet her parents. He also worked hard to surprise everyone, but the result was nothing. Hawa couldn't speak like a normal person. Only the level of communication between her parents and Hawa improved. In order to choose the herbs arranged by his family, Jian Wu will go hiking together in the winter. The weather is very active. He goes with his parents. They are old, so they can't keep up with the youth. After a while, Hawa went a little further to rest. His parents sat down and panted. They praised Hawa for being healthy and he tried hard to keep up, but he couldn't. Jian Wu then turned around and reminded Hawa to pay attention to the people around him next time. The view of the mountain facing their village is so beautiful. Jian Wu exclaimed that he thought this place was discovered by his father. But in reality, his father did not tell the story of his childhood. 
Whenever he is also very active, there is a story to tell them every time he goes. This place was also discovered by Jian Wu. It has been a long time since they returned to this place. So Jian Wu forgot to look at Hawa, who was so quiet. He immediately ran to see his panicked Jian Wu and quickly turned back to call his parents. Hawa had just picked ginseng plants in the forest. So there is no need to look for herbs anymore. The whole family arranged to go down the mountain immediately. Ginseng is a rare plant that Jian Wu heard will help people become stronger if processed. He plans to come back and eat it, but his father didn't want to. Don't let him want to use this ginseng root to make wine, so he can drink it until Jian Wu gets married. Immediately after arriving home, they met the housemaid and the last woman. They came here to meet Jian Wu, and they promptly invited him into the house. He himself had no idea how famous he was in the country, and the title of the best farmer fell to Jian Wu when he could grow many Class B agricultural products. With achievements like this, the knight and the woman came here to propose to work together with him to produce the masterpiece proposal of Beauty Rock Bee Honey. Seeing their business cards, Jian Wu was surprised. Both of these people came from the Xinhua Group. It is the largest company in the world. While Jian Wu was busy working on a contract with the head butler, the girl ran out to help her family cut potato seeds. She did it very quickly. Even Jian Wu's parents were surprised to see her. For Yuna, who was in charge of developing pharmaceuticals and artifacts in the world's number one corporation, it was as easy as turning her hand. But Yuna did it to catch Hawa's attention. After discussing the new contract, Jian Wu was surprised to see that his parents were leading valuable customers to cut potatoes. Both of them laughed immediately at this kind of help, because Yuna wanted to do it, as if they were not forced. Knight Butler also did not stop. If it was something the woman wanted to do, she also wanted to help. Knight took the potatoes and joined the group. Jian Wu could only laugh. Behind him, there were now two people in the world's largest company cutting potatoes in his house. Who would believe such nonsense? Thanks to their help, the speed of cutting potatoes became faster. It only took a short time to finish everything. Currently, Yuna mentioned the contract. Jian Wu had a very thorough discussion with Knight, the head butler. He also heard from Miss Yuna that she wanted to work with him to find a cure for her illness. Seeing Hawa and then laughing, she told Jian Wu everything she was looking for a cure to help her grow. Her body couldn't grow anymore. But she didn't think she would be immortal forever in this baby form. Jian Wu understood that he promised to bring her a masterpiece fruit and stone bee honey for Yuna, for her to experiment. He laughed, thinking that this was support, because even his company didn't have time for it. The head butler reminded the woman to return soon, and now Jian Wu had more work to do. Thanks to the sponsorship from Xinhua Corporation, Jian Wu was able to easily obtain a monster corpse that would serve the purpose of planting the masterpiece he requested. However, they sent him the most intact monster body, complete with teeth and claws. This could be sold for profit. After all, it was good to collaborate with Xinhua Corporation. Currently, the head servant called to check if he had received the monster body. He should have brought it himself but there were other things preventing him from going. The head servant had some reminders for Jian Wu. According to his research, he could grow a masterpiece tree just with monster bones. He was afraid it wouldn't be right to send the whole child to Jian Wu like that. He couldn't tell him that he already had the recipe. Jian Wu covered it up by thinking that he was just experimenting. Besides this monster corpse, he also received a swarm of bees. A few days ago, Jian Wu asked the head waiter to help him handle it. It is undeniable that stone bees are still a type of monster. If he becomes their target, he cannot handle them. The head waiter immediately understood the problem. Based on his position, he changed the background of these bees from monsters to harmless insects. Now, no one can target them anymore. The head waiter fulfilled these requests completely. The day before, he found out that Hawa was not his biological child, and he was surprised. Although Hawa was not his own child, Jian Wu still treated her very well. They were a happy family, and he wanted Hawa to keep that smile forever. Gian Wu took Hawa to the farm to continue working. After a while, Ella called Jian Wu to come back. 
The stone bees brought something to him. Through communication, Jeon Wu understood that they wanted to exchange their honey with his processed honey. Seeing that this honey was of the highest quality, Jeon Wu thought Yuna would be happy. But he didn't know how to explain where he got this honey from. The entire Jeon Wu family gathered to enjoy the newly acquired rock honey. It was a heavenly taste that the whole family found delicious. Everyone wanted to drink more, but Jian Wu didn't allow it. Each of them had already drunk three cups. His father scolded him for having so much honey hidden away, so he didn't let them enjoy it anymore. Jian Wu firmly refused because it wasn't his to give. There was a message from the head servant asking for Jian Wu's permission to come to his house. At the same time, he also wanted to give them this honey. So he immediately agreed. Yuna and the head servant arrived so quickly that Jian Wu thought they would come and then announce it. When he arrived home, his father kept reminding him to bring water to welcome the guests. Jian Wu was aware that this time he let Hawa do the task. The little girl ran to the kitchen and poured honey on the table and made them a cup of honey tea. Soon, Yuna and Knight drank it and were surprised by its delicious taste. Everyone wanted to have another drink. After enjoying their meal, they went to the main business. The reason they came here today was to discuss their upcoming business plans. It was definitely important for Jian Wu to sit quietly and listen to both of them. Knight then burst into laughter, which didn't exactly make Jian Wu realize that Yuna came here to play with Hawa. So he let her go with Yuna. She played with Hawa until late at night. Before leaving, Jian Wu allowed them to visit any time they wanted. Now even without a business plan. Yuna was excited to go tomorrow. Of course, Knight, the butler, disagreed. Knight brought a box for Yuna. He called it a surprise gift from Jian Wu. He was sure it would make Yuna even happier, until Yuna opened the gift given by Jian Wu to her. Yuna immediately burst into tears. After this, she could conduct growth medicine research. After a period of pirating romantic films with his grandmother, Hawa imitated the actors acting in the film. Jian Wu laughed and patted her head, praising Hawa's talent. He thought that in the future she would most likely become a famous actress. But if that's the case, Hawa must study harder so that she can at least mention the names of each family member. After that, they went to the farm together. Nothing happened. When she left, the stone bees were also fine because of the new characteristics of this farmland. After Jian Wu received honey from the bees there, there were some changes in the land. The first is that the area of the farmland has increased significantly, and the second is the formation of spatial cracks in this cultivated land. According to L, these are newly formed soil fissures. She said it is a path that connects to another land. This made Jian Wu a little afraid that monsters would come here through this path. L laughed at this. She didn't need to worry because as long as she is here, they cannot enter without her permission. Above all, any monster that wants to use this land must have Jian Wu's permission. Jian Wu felt relieved after hearing this, but he didn't know how to use the permission. After thinking about what to do, Jian Wu let the stone bees go explore for a while. Although they were just pets in this cultivated land, they were still wild animals, which is probably why the stone bees could pass through this land. Thanks to that, they could go out and collect honey in the most stable way. Jian Wu then reminded the children to take out their pens and papers because today was the day he would check their results. While the group of children took the exam, Jian Wu began to think about planting more trees in his upcoming mission. Now Jian Wu had to plant two more different plants than the ones he had planted before to become a true farmer. The restaurant Zhang Su continued to welcome guests. This time, Zhong Hyuk and Su Jin brought their two children. It was Yi Ran and Yi Jin who were as hot tempered as their parents, constantly arguing in front of adults. This made Zhang Su gasp and then laugh. He then mentioned that today's menu was called Devil's Temptation and Angel's Temptation. Angel's Temptation was warm honey tea, and Devil's Temptation was ice cream. Zhang Su let them choose their menu as they pleased. Everyone had their own opinions, but Zhang Hyuk chose to leave it up to them, and he chose the Devil's Temptation menu for his wife. 
He made the decision himself because he knew his wife liked to eat ice cream. But this made Su Jin still angry. When he made such a decision for her as he pleased, with two children each defending one person. So a big fight broke out again. After a while, they calmed down and had a meal together. After finishing the appetizers, the temptation collection also arrived. Just smelling the aroma released made everyone drool. Seeing this, Yiran asked Yirin to come and try a piece of honey tea. Of course, her older sister didn't let her. Jung Hyuk tried the ice cream and suddenly asked his daughter. He asked her to give him another ice cream on the condition that he would buy her an expensive gift. Seeing something shady here, Yiran disagreed to eat the ice cream. She shivered with delight. Jung Hyuk's wife turned to ask her husband where he got so much money from and promised to buy something for her. They continued to argue. So Jong Su didn't know what to do, so he could only send a message to Jian Wu for help. Jian Wu also thought that Jong Su was busy with his new honey dish. So he didn't pay much attention to this boy still leading the atmosphere to the farmland. When he arrived, he saw a horned rabbit crowding around to watch something with El. Jian Wu was confused. He was afraid something would happen to the children. So he went out to ask them and received the news that the golden goblin had come to this land again. The previous night, this farmland was still very peaceful, but the unwelcome guest once again visited this place. El had been cautious since the last time. She gathered everyone together to make a plan to capture this goblin. The golden goblin walked happily through the land. When he was surprised to see the music in the mist, it was caused by the spirits of wind and water. He panicked and hid inside the glass wall and then jumped. When the monster inside saw him, it was actually just a shadow created by the spirits of earth and fire. At this point, the golden goblin was already scared. But it wasn't over yet when El and the horned rabbit built a tower. The horned rabbit to scare him. The frightened golden goblin cowered and ran away. He forgot the treasure bag he always carried. It was like a bag that the golden goblin always carried. They tried to open it but couldn't do anything. Jian Wu also tried to open it and failed. He assumed that there must be some kind of spell to open this bag. But the wind just turned the bag over and the items automatically fell out. The golden goblin's treasure was only inherited like an urban legend. Who would have thought that Jian Wu would see it with his own eyes? He sat down to see what precious items he had obtained from the goblin. With this incident, the items he had stolen before were returned along with other items that they didn't know were useless. Of course, not all items were useless. From the pile of items, Jian Wu took the extinct hellgrass plant chair. It dragged everything to hell. Looking through the introduction line made Jian Wu slightly pale, so it hasn't been planted for a while. When he finished bringing the wind home, he found Yuna and the head servant of the night waiting in his house's yard. They came here to give Jian Wu a housewarming cake. Starting today, they will move next to his house. A few days ago, his neighbor announced that his son was moving and asked him to go to the city to live with him when he was recruited by the Xinhua group. At first, Jian Wu could only congratulate him until today. When he saw Yuna announce that she was moving here, he knew that all of this was arranged by her so that he could see her more often. The spirits flew to report that they had completed the given task, and Jian Wu let them fly freely. It surprised Yuna a little. She could control star spirits. Usually, it takes a lot of energy to maintain a spirit like that. However, how strong Jian Wu was to do that. He couldn't tell Yuna that the spirit was summoned by Hawa. So he just went along with her, pretending to be strong. Suddenly, Hawa screamed, making him jump everywhere. He messed up the cake that Yuna brought to move to Jian Wu's house. He seemed to be lost in this happy heaven with the delicious taste of this cake. Yuna added grade A-plus rock honey to this cake to make it even more delicious. She was very grateful to Jian Wu for the amount of rock honey that his experiment had developed. After a while, they finished all the cake that Yuna brought, and Hawa lay down to eat. Knight suggested taking Hawa for a walk and Jian Wu immediately understood and asked Yuna to take Hawa for a walk. While he stayed to discuss some plans with Knight, he mentioned the land and the dungeon. 
if the horned rabbit land was just low danger land. There, it's completely different. It is a dangerous area classified as the highest danger class. In this land, there are many toxic gases. Moreover, it also escapes causing a great impact on the surrounding area, making everything within 500 meters around it have to stop working. That's why Knight wants Jian Wu to invade this land. Jian Wu was shocked. He is just a farmer. How could he invade a dangerous area? Knight forgot to clearly explain to Jian Wu that he didn't need to go to that area. He just needed to be a supporter behind to clean the dungeon. The Superhuman Association manager, Beck, contacted Yuna and asked her to make a detoxification material that would help them completely overcome the poison in that area. Yuna found it not difficult to make this antidote. However, one ingredient needed to make this potion was too difficult to grow. No matter how hard the company tried, it couldn't work. So she had to ask Jian Wu to help her plant it. When she thought about it, she turned around and saw that these trees were already dead. Because he was bored, Jian Wu played music to see if they were happier. But they died because the songs he played were too boring. Usually when Knight gave Jian Wu a specimen tree, it died. At least this tree didn't make him wait too long to harvest. It only took a week to bloom, which made Jian Wu feel like he was playing a fun farming game. He glanced around to survey the area. As expected, Jian Wu could grow all kinds of plants. The level was sufficient for Xinhua's requirements. Watching L and Jian Wu mingling together. Jian Wu, confused in their corner, looked towards another tree. On the other hand, the surprising quality caught Jian Wu's attention. The quality of these plants reached a plus value, but not from Jian Wu. Currently, the new horned rabbit puffed up its chest to show off its achievements from a few days ago. While the other horned rabbits were still happily playing with each other, it stood in the corner of the board because it was special. It didn't want to play. With its teammates, it only wanted to think of ways to make Jian Wu recognize it. At that moment, it was discovered that Jian Wu was suffering from a headache due to the poisonous plant. So it planted it itself and succeeded. With this achievement, he gained recognition. Jian Wu successfully planted highly toxic plants. And to report his success, Jian Wu immediately called Knight and Yuna. They went straight to his house. But before the officials started, Yuna needed to embrace the air to refresh herself. Initially, she came here like a lost soul. After embracing the air for a while, she was able to return to normal. In her main job, Yuna showed them her latest craft that could help them explore the Gangnam area. They were immune to any poison. It would be more effective if they soaked it in their mouths. Seeing Yuna's interest, Hawa did not hesitate to give it to her. But their company could only make five of these gems for five people. They couldn't enter dangerous areas. To make these gems, the ingredients are very rare. Hearing the high price made Jian Wu turn pale and forced Hawa to spit out the pearls immediately. Hawa almost swallowed it, and she didn't have an excretory system, so she couldn't get it back. After Gian Wu took them to the yard to deliver the newly planted potion, after the night, Yuna left. Ella made a horned rabbit hat, as if she had become a very good farmer. It looked good enough for her. Jian Wu patted the horned rabbit's head and praised her for doing a great job that he couldn't do. Then he couldn't call her horned rabbit forever. So Jian Wu gave her a name called Kyung Kyung. The horned rabbit happily accepted her new name. Jian Wu was also somewhat relieved when Kyung Kyung liked the name. From now on, she was no longer a pet, but part of his family. At the manager's office, he was surprised to see a poisonous flower plant in front of him. So far, he had discussed with countless occultists, but this time it was impressive as this tree often died easily. So people gave it another name, the Last Death. Somehow the mystic had grown this plant perfectly. Baek Chian Su had seen this plant in the upper class, but this tree far exceeded what he had seen. He immediately rushed to the representative to ask for information about the person who gave him this plant. Of course, Jian Wu's information was kept secret because he requested it, so they couldn't share it. Instead, the business case with Tuan Beck's branch was given top priority. Thanks to this factory, he could destroy the S-ranked area. So the suppliers offered a very high price to Beck Chian Su, although he didn't agree with this price. 
strategy had to be prioritized. A few days after the successful raid, even Baek Chion could appear on TV. This didn't make Jian Wu happy because he didn't have any merit in this matter at all. Thanks to Kuk Young's help, he could grow such a tree. Currently, the atmosphere leaned towards his ear and whispered something secret. Jian Wu immediately asked for permission to lead the atmosphere to the farmland. It was already very late, but they still came, to make El and Kyung Kyung very difficult to understand. Jian Wu brought a lot of honey tea, and together they held a party to celebrate Kyung Kyung. It was a great idea. Both Hawa and Kyung Kyung were touched to the point of tears. They celebrated together until the early morning, when Jian Wu woke up and found his body stiff. He thought he was experiencing sleep paralysis. In reality, it was the children and horned rabbits crawling on top of him to sleep. Not wanting to wake them up, Jian Wu had to lie down and wait until they woke up. This achievement is impressive, but for someone who is afraid of attention like Jian Wu, this peaceful situation is still suitable for him. It's better for him. Jian Wu doesn't even remember how long he has been planting peppers. They have already sprouted, but they look a bit slippery. So he has to stake them, but doing all this takes so long. Jian Wu sighs lazily as he sees El and Hawa offering to help him. Jian Wu lets the earth spirit help him hold the stake while he hammers it. When they finish, it's El and Hawa's turn to tie them. The children's knots are so cute that Jian Wu has to take out his phone to capture this memorable moment. Jian Wu is so busy working that he accidentally drops his phone. Only in the evening, when the wood stacking job is finished, does he notice. Hawa is exhausted and yawning, so Jian Wu will take her back home. When he realizes his phone is missing, he turns around to ask Ella and the spirit if they have seen it. After explaining in detail, Ella also understands what happened, but it's too late. She advises Jian Wu to go back home for now. She will go with the spirit to look for his phone. Thinking about it, Jian Wu doesn't need to contact anyone, so he immediately returns that night. Ella gathers a group of spirits to search for the phone. And after a while, they finally find it. He holds the phone without knowing its purpose. Suddenly, the phone lights up. It surprises him. It's not a coincidence, but destiny to make him a famous YouTuber in the future. Jian Wu used to like superheroes, so he watched a lot of YouTube videos on this topic. Every time there was a new video, it would notify him. He receives a notification. Curiously, L clicks on the sound coming from the phone to surprise herself. She and the spirits gather on the couch to watch, until the next morning when Gion Wu comes again, and L apologizes for breaking his phone. Actually, L watched the video until the battery ran out. It was just the battery running out, but initially Ella cried a lot. She admitted that her mistake made Gion Wu very difficult to calm down. Now that Ella is feeling better, she started imitating what she watched on her phone yesterday. The horned rabbit and the clapping air were watching El do it. Jian Wu just stood outside watching and laughing. Thinking about it, she realized that this farm was very interesting. There was also a phone signal for online, and the weather here is very stable. At that time, Jian Wu came up with the idea that Jian Wu and Hawa would buy a gift for El. He was sure El would be happy. Then he accidentally passed by Jong Su's restaurant. His restaurant was always busy. It seems that they are still shooting an interview with Jong Su. So Hawa excitedly ran to greet everyone. Jong Su noticed that everyone stopped recording. The camera was dragged along with him, making Jian Wu a little scared until Jong Su reminded them to take it somewhere else. By looking at Jian Wu here, Jong Su also wanted to ask for permission to visit tomorrow. He has been hoarding some Minotaur meat lately so he wants to enjoy it with his family. Jian Wu was shocked to hear about the Minotaur meat, because this monster is terrifying. Hunting it is already difficult. Who would have thought he would eat its meat? When he turned around, Hawa was nowhere to be seen. This girl was dancing in front of the reporter's camera. After the story, Jian Wu carried the girl and asked for permission to leave first, seeing Jiang Su so close. He made everyone curious about Jiang Su. He could succeed today because of Jian Wu. He's like his benefactor. Jian Wu brought a gift for L, which was the latest phone. 
El happily accepted this gift and showed it to the horned rabbit. Because Ella couldn't leave this land, she would definitely be sad. So with this phone, Jian Wu hopes she can see. Because Zhang Su came to his house today, Jian Wu didn't go anywhere. He spent the whole morning doing everything. So now there's nothing left to do. He's bored watching YouTube. Suddenly a breeze crawled onto his lap and showed him the seeds of hell grass. In his free time, Jian Wu took it to try planting. They both planted. Jian Wu worried that there must be a reason why this plant is extinct. Right now, the nighthouse manager called to ask for permission to come to his house. They stood in front of the house and just waited for Jian Wu's permission to run in. The breeze came in to greet Yuna. Even Jian Wu forgot about the hell plant. As soon as he left, it grew. Butler Knight came to announce that they were allowed to mass produce the antidote, so that outsiders can buy the antidote at a cheaper price. Gaon Wu gave Yuna praise that surprised her. The radio program is a program created by the hunting organization in collaboration with Xinhua Corporation. They think that Jian Wu should be introduced to the public as an expert in this poison. But Jian Wu still refuses because he's worried about being in front of so many cameras. What he wants is to live peacefully and not be famous. Hearing this immediately made Yuna think that Jian Wu is really too simple and not greedy. This is the first time she has seen someone so strange. While Yuna thinks that Jian Wu's camera problem is just an excuse. In the bee farm, the stone bees fly to ask El for permission to use the land route to go out and get honey. Ella agrees with the swarm of stone bees flying past the path to reach the dark cave, where they find glowing flowers. Inside this dark, poisonous cave, they happily gather to search for honey without knowing that there are creatures staring at them. Usually, soldier bees would stay to protect their hive. Without leaving, but now worker bees go out to search for honey, while he keeps them safe. This means their hive is located in a very secure place where they remain protected, so the stone bees don't have to work hard to collect honey. When the monster rushes towards them, they get scared and run inside. The curious animal also wants to pass through, but at that moment, it seems like he is playing with his life. That night, Zhang Su brought monster meat to be eaten together with Jian Wu's family. This monster meat is very expensive, making Jian Wu's mother a little embarrassed. Zhang Su laughed out loud. He said that this meat is nothing compared to Jian Wu's help. Moreover, he came to thank him for the kimchi his family gave last time. Jian Wu quickly went out to help Zhang Su bring the items into the house. Besides the meat, he also brought some Korean beef that is enough for two more mouths to eat, Yuna and the night servant's head. Jian Wu sighed, knowing that it's not enough. So he prepared a lot of pork meat, hoping that after today, Zhang Su won't be surprised by the power of the wind. Zhang Wu is focused on grilling the meat for everyone to enjoy. Seeing that he's doing too much, Zhang Su offers to help him. However, John Wu refused. As the host, he had to serve the guests today. Hawa understood what Zhang Su meant. She quickly ran to give Jian Wu a piece. Although it was big, it was from her heart. So he ate it all. The fun party came to an end. As a dessert, Jian Wu used honey ice to make tea to invite everyone who accepted it. Zhang Su revealed that he didn't just bring meat here today. He took out an invitation card for a meeting of superhumans. If Gan Wu was okay, he wanted to invite him and Hawa to go with him to the party. In this dark cave, a little boy has just been born. Although he is still small, he already has three horns on his head. What others see would think this is a three-horned dinosaur. But not only that, there are also a pair of cute wings behind him, proving to them that this is not an ordinary dinosaur. Born in this dark cave, he has no knowledge of the outside world. Seeing other creatures move for the first time makes his friends very excited. So he rushes to the crowd of stone bees to play. The boy runs to the swarm of bees, but they are all scared and run away. His friend's mother wakes up, and he returns to tell these stories. But his mother doesn't care and continues to sleep. So the child shows rebellion against his mother. For the first time in his life, and in response to the child's first feelings, the mother throws him the wrapped towel and goes wherever she wants. And she goes to sleep. 
The friend picks up the flower stem filled with the towel and then set off to find a ticket. In the agricultural land, L found him. However, she didn't know who he was. The boy asked L for permission to let him play there. But without Gaon Wu's permission, he hesitated a little. After pleading for a while, the girl also gave in and gave the boy a condition that if he agreed to the rules of this land, she would let him in. He didn't understand anything and just accepted it to embark on a new world. Jian Wu and Hawa were surprised by the presence of this new friend. Ella told Jian Wu how she sympathized with this friend because he had been in a dark cave for a long time without a friend. However, Jian Wu couldn't let this unknown creature stay on his agricultural land. He asked El to take the child back. But it seemed impossible because the path had changed to another place, and it was very difficult to find a place for this boy to live. Although reluctantly, the agricultural land had gained a new member, after becoming part of Jian Wu's family. Jian Wu is still having issues with this friend, because he only eats those things. Jian Wu and Hawa touched. At first, he didn't eat anything given to him. He only ate the stock of flowers he brought. When invited to taste these flowers, Jian Wu found that the flower content was not normal at all. His friend eats this every day, making Jian Wu feel like a rich man. That's why Jian Wu wants to try planting some silver pine flowers in this soil. But this species seems to not have seeds to plant. It will be difficult to maintain the mouth for this friend. While thinking, the boy reached for the kimchi fried rice pot made by Jian Wu. Seeing it very bad, but his friends still eat it very well. Seeing this friend very funny, making his father struggle to feed his friend. Jian Wu decides to raise this boy, because his mother reminded him to give him a name. He could not keep calling him a little boy. His mother reminded Gian Wu that he had to rack his brain to think of a cool name. Jian Wu could not come up with a good name, and his mother thought he should call him Golden Boy. His father strongly opposed this name. He wanted to name him Gonzalez, but his mother and Jian Wu did not agree. The argument continued until the last night for Jian Wu and his family to agree on a name as normal as possible. The next day, Jian Wu took him to the Tamed Beast Registration Office. The flight attendant instructed Jian Wu to wear two bracelets on this friend, at all times so that everyone would know he was tamed. If something happened to remove it, they would not be responsible. Next is the registration ID for the tamed monster. Jian Wu, yesterday when his parents argued endlessly, gave this boy the name Khan. From now on, Khan will be a member of their family. Once upon a time, when Kaun joined his family, Jian Wu was always worried about how he would adapt to such an unfamiliar environment. But Kaun did a great job. Not only was he liked because he was quick, but also because he behaved funny and childishly. So Jian Wu truly dispelled those worries. Kaun jumped onto Jian Wu's body and licked him to show how much he loved him. Hawa saw this and jumped on him with jealousy, forcing Jian Wu to carry them both. Jian Wu had to take them to the farmland. Seeing Hawa and Khan being carried made Ella jealous. She wanted to do the same. Jian Wu turned to see the trembling horned rabbit. On one hand, seeing them there was the fact that other monsters in this land were very afraid of Kaun. Jian Wu thought they hated Kaun, but that wasn't the case. Even though Kaun didn't do anything to them. The instinct of the horned rabbit always told them that Khan was dangerous at first. Jian Wu was also a little worried that Kaun was a wild animal. But Kaun could play with Hawa and the cow at home, so he was less cautious. Kaun didn't make any mistakes. Jian Wu reminded Kyung Kyung not to do that to the boys. Kyung Kyung also hoped she could get to know this new friend, so Kaun jumped off Jian Wu's back and ran to meet Kyung Kyung. But Kyung Kyung's instinct still caused her to hang her tail and run away, which made Kaun very sad. That evening, Gaon Wu returned to tell his father everything, feeling unsure of what to do next. Suddenly, his father laughed again and shared stories with Jian Wu about his childhood. Since he came here from Seoul, he was just a talkative child. But that crybaby child has now grown into an amazing person like this. His father wanted to tell Jian Wu that everything has a solution and everything will be fine. Thanks to these encouraging words, Jian Wu suddenly thought of a way and asked them both to help him. The next day, 
Jian Wu gathered everyone in the farmland to hold a party to welcome Kaun into the family. While Hawa and El were overwhelmed with today's dishes, the horned rabbit and the stone bee were trembling and dared not approach them. Jian Wu boasted about the most delicious main dish today, a masterpiece pancake. Its aroma was so fragrant that it immediately dispelled the horned rabbit's fear. Jian Wu reminded Kaun the child to quickly bring out a plate of cake to invite the horned rabbit. He smiled brightly, but in the eyes of the horned rabbit, Kaun stared at them. The whole group was so scared that they immediately fled. Only Kyung Kyung stayed behind. Jian Wu knew this would definitely happen, but Kyung Kyung dared to stay, and everything turned out as he had hoped. Last night, Jian Wu called Kyung Kyung to talk privately. He was also very sad because he couldn't get along with Kaun. Gaon Wu bowed to encourage him. He knew Kyung Kyung could do it. He felt more sympathetic towards Kaun than his natural fear. Moreover, Kyung Kyung was a special leader of the horned rabbits. He hoped that he would stand out to eliminate the fear of the entire herd of horned rabbits. Kyung Kyung gathered her composure and walked towards the rabbit. She ate a piece of cake and shouted to remind the horned rabbit that there was nothing to be afraid of. She announced to her agreement that from now on, the rabbit was part of the horned rabbit family. She wasn't as scary as they thought. With these words, the horned rabbit wasn't too scared. Kaun happily jumped into her arms. Of course, he was still a little scared after overcoming that fear. The official party began, and Gion Wu felt much relieved now. In the future, there would be more things like this but she was confident that she would be able to face them. After the party ended, Gaon Wu took Kaun and Hawa away. Then, El began to execute her secret plan. In this world, we are currently living in the era of superhumans. Instead of dreaming of great fortunes, people aspire to awaken their superpowers. However, no matter how big their dreams are, no one can be all-powerful. Hawa did a fashion show for her. And Yuna, she never believed that one day she would do it. She could sit next to the daughter of the president of the world's largest company, and even collaborate with her to showcase a fashion show to Hawa. Suddenly, Yuna and the night household manager invited her to their house for a housewarming party. She thought it would be simple. Who would have ever thought that it was just an excuse for Yuna to invite them over? To try on Hawa's clothes. Yuna wanted to change into Hawa's clothes herself but she firmly refused. She couldn't let people know that Hawa was a spirit. The reason she could become a superhuman was because she discovered a bud. By taking good care of it, the little Hawa came into her world. And as a spirit, Hawa possessed many magical powers. If he were to tell everyone that he is a spirit, many bad things would happen to him. He cannot let that happen. He just wants Hawa to be able to live a normal life like everyone else. Hawa is wearing a super cute dress. Yuna is speechless. Yuna reluctantly jumps to hug him. Jian Wu thanks Yuna for giving Hawa many new items today. Not only Hawa, but Yuna also prepares more for him. Soon the head servant of the night comes to Jian Wu's dressing room. He prepares many things for today just to showcase his talent. A few minutes later, Jian Wu comes out in a suit. It's the first time he's worn this outfit, and he doesn't know if it's beautiful or not. Yuna feels fine, but Hawa doesn't like it because it's not like Jian Wu, who is usually simple. Yuna orders the knight to immediately change his style, making Jian Wu not understand the purpose of doing this. Yuna looks at him confused. In preparation for the upcoming meeting with the superhumans, the news of Min Sioran's retirement as a hunter, along with her monster partner Dolso, made headlines in the newspaper. Known for her exceptional abilities, Siorin quickly rose to fame in the hunter world at the age of 27. Within just three years, she managed to take over a prominent guild in Seoul, showcasing her unparalleled talent. However, it was not only her skills that garnered attention, but also her humble nature and unwavering dedication to her monster partner Dolso. Min Siorin left a lasting impact on the hunter world, despite her relatively short career. Following her decision to retire, Min Seorin embarked on a new journey to pursue her original dream of becoming a monster livestock expert. Remarkably, Dolso underwent a transformation from a fearsome monster to an adorable cat, 
symbolizing their transition into a different chapter of their lives. However, Min Sioran's research on Mason Bees, her core area of interest, faced numerous challenges and made little progress. Despite seeking guidance from renowned expert Dr. Go Myonghan, the results remained mediocre. Now 31 years old, Min Sioran finds herself contemplating her dreams and aspirations. Although retired from her hunter life, she unexpectedly receives an invitation to the spring welcoming party on a ship, organized by the Superhuman Friendship Organization. Min Sioran seizes the opportunity and extends an invitation to Dolso, inviting him for a leisurely stroll outside their home. Min Sioran's retirement marks the beginning of a new chapter in her life, filled with uncertainties and the pursuit of her passions. Li Jianwu took Hawa and Kaun for a stroll to admire the blooming flower petals in the garden. Kaun was delighted, but suddenly he seemed ready to sprint. Li Jianwu swiftly caught him. Li Jianwu conveyed to Kaun the importance of not straying away and followed Hawa's example of staying close. Just as he was explaining this to Kaun, Li Jianwu realized that Hawa was no longer by his side. Hawa had gone to the food vendor to request some food. Li Jianwu anticipated that the day would be quite exhausting. He promptly called Hawa and suggested taking a selfie together. However, instead of a photo, Li Jianwu's parents requested a video call with Hawa and Kaun. Li Jianwu's parents greeted Hawa and Kaun and encouraged them to enjoy themselves. Onlookers noticed the trio on the video call and commented on how adorable they were. This marked Li Jianwu's first video call providing an intriguing experience. Following the call with his parents, Li John Wu decided to make another call, this time to the manager of the farmland dungeon. The dungeon manager inquired about the reason for Li John Wu's call. During the video call with the dungeon manager, Kaun suddenly broke free from Li John Wu's grasp and encountered Dolso. Dolso, taken aback by Kaun's presence, swiftly assumed a defensive stance. Li Jian Wu also crossed paths with Min Sioran. Min Sioran was taken aback by Dolso's sudden alertness. Dolso, a fierce monster that had previously attacked the class a level dungeon and lost a battle of nerves with Kaun, was now behaving differently. Li Jian Wu swiftly intervened, carrying Kaun and giving him a stern warning to obey. Despite Min Sioran's curiosity about Kaun's identity, Dolso's clear dislike for the situation prompted Min Sioran to bid farewell and leave with Li Jian Wu, Kaun, and Hawa. Li Jian Wu expressed relief at the outcome, believing that Kaun had learned from the incident and that it did not escalate into a major issue due to Kaun's young age. Li Jian Wu, along with Kaun and Hawa, attended the spring welcoming party on a ship organized by the Superhuman Friendship Organization in the evening. The party was held on a grand and extravagant cruise ship, and the invited guests had already gathered. As they boarded the ship, Li Jian Wu was stopped by a servant at the entrance, who informed him that for security reasons, the monsters brought by the guests needed to be deposited separately. This news shocked Li Jian Wu, Kaun, and Hawa. Despite it being a rule, Li Jian Wu had no choice but to comply and leave his monster behind. However, Kaun refused to do so, leading to a 30-minute persuasion session before Li Jian Wu could convince him. Throughout this ordeal, Li Jian Wu couldn't help but feel guilty towards Kaun. The spring welcoming party was bustling with guests, and the venue exuded a luxurious atmosphere. Li Jian Wu regretted not wearing the clothes that Yuna had prepared, as he felt underdressed for the occasion. Suddenly, he heard someone calling his name. It was Su Chen accompanied by Yuna and her servant. Hawa's face lit up with joy upon seeing them. Li Jianwu expressed his protest to Sushan for not informing him about the party's opulence. Sushan apologized, citing his busy schedule as the reason for the oversight. Fireworks illuminated the night sky, signaling the commencement of the spring welcoming party. Bake Chiansu in his capacity as the deputy head of the Wanju Superhuman Association branch, delivered an opening speech from the ship's deck. Li Jianwu and Hawa were filled with joy at the festivities, no longer concerned about their attire. Unbeknownst to them, there were other colleagues who had also disregarded the dress code. Like Li Jianwu, Min Seorin had made the same mistake and felt embarrassed, 
wishing to leave the party early. The spring welcoming party organized by the Superhuman Friendship Organization commenced, and the Beck Chiansu branch took the opportunity to introduce the invited superhumans. Among them were Noeji, Park Young Yok, and Young Su Jin, who attended with their children. Witnessing the introduction of these superhumans by Baek Cheonsu had a profound impact on Lee Jian Wu, who felt a sense of regret for not becoming a superhuman sooner. It was as if he had attended his first ever idol concert. Unlike Hawa, who paid no attention to the introduced superhumans, Lee Jian Wu was preoccupied with the fact that Hawa seemed disinterested in his story. He also pondered over Sushin, who had invited him out of obligation due to her various commitments. Suddenly, the waitress Yuna approached Li Jianwu from behind and inquired if he was enjoying the party. Li Jianwu genuinely expressed his enjoyment as he was able to see the superhumans he admired all in one place, which deeply moved him. After the introduction of superhumans with attacking abilities, Beck Chiansu proceeded to introduce superhumans who were experts in swordsmanship. This left Li Ji and Wu perplexed as to why Beck Chiansu chose to prioritize the introduction of non attacking superhumans. Yuna explained that this gathering was organized as a trade off for a previous rejection of Li Jian Wu's promotion broadcast for non attacker superhumans. Li Jian Wu was concerned about Luna's presence in such a setting. However, Yuna's servant reassured him by explaining that Yuna had brought a special recognition barrier artifact ensuring that Yuna's arrival would go unnoticed and she would remain unrecognized. As an extra precaution, Yuna also brought a friend who was responsible for the strategic planning of the Xinhua group. Li Jian Wu admired the artifact, as it complemented Luna's appearance and made her even more beautiful. Yuna went through the trouble of attending this party solely for Hawa's sake, as it was her debut. Li Jian Wu chuckled upon hearing this. Yuna informed Li Jian Wu that Hawa had caused quite a commotion at the party. When Li Jian Wu saw Hawa using a spirit to record and display it on a large screen above Baek Chian Su, who was delivering a speech, he was taken aback. The disruption caused by Li Jian Wu and Hawa left Baek Chian Su bewildered. Suddenly, Li Jian Wu felt a sense of unease, experiencing camera fever, and contemplated leaving the venue promptly. After a few minutes of recording, the spirit finally departed, leaving a sense of regret for not being able to capture Hawa again. Yuna approached them and inquired about Li Jianwu's well-being. Li Jianwu responded by explaining that he felt a bit nauseous, possibly due to the shock he experienced. His face appeared pale. In a hurry to find some solitude, Li Jianwu bid farewell to Yuna and mentioned his intention to seek a place with fewer people to catch some fresh air. Just before Li Jianwu departed, someone unexpectedly approached and greeted Yuna. This surprised Li Jianwu, prompting him to inquire about the identity of the person who came to greet them. Yuna's maid clarified that the individual was from Luna's side and introduced himself as Phone. Yuna's maid inquired about Phone's purpose for coming. Phone discreetly whispered to Luna. Suddenly, Yuna excused herself momentarily, assuring Hawa that she would return. Li Jianwu and Hawa took a brief break. When Li Jianwu was preparing to take a break, he unexpectedly encountered Min Seorin and exchanged greetings with her. Min Seorin was taken aback by the encounter with Li Jianwu. Li Jianwu, who had not previously known Min Seorin, finally recognized her as the extraordinary Min Seorin, as he was a devoted fan of hers. Initially, Min Seorin spoke to Li Jian Wu in a slightly irritated manner for not recognizing her when they first met at the park. However, she quickly clarified that she was joking and mentioned that even her close friend failed to recognize her. Li Jian Wu inquired about rumors of Min Seorin's retirement and expressed surprise at their unexpected meeting. Min Seorin explained that she attended the party for a specific reason other than the celebration. They shared a laugh over their mismatched attire. Hawa observed their interaction with confusion. Li Jianwu asked Min Seorin about her cat companion, Dolso, and she mentioned that Dolso was likely managing the monster waiting room at that moment. The conversation turned to Dolso's strained relationship with Kaun. In a hurry, the trio headed towards the monster waiting room. Along the way, 
Li Jianwu explained to Min Seorin that monsters naturally fear Kaun. Min Seorin expressed concern that Dolso and Kaun might end up in a conflict. Upon reaching the monster waiting room, they were left speechless by the chaotic scene before them. The monsters were trembling against the walls, the attendants were bewildered, and most notably, Kaun was peacefully asleep on Dolso's transformed body while Dolso appeared unconscious. On the day of the boat party in the rice field gungeon, Li Jun Wu found himself in a peculiar situation. The caretaker of El Ku's dungeon asked Kyuk Young to record her singing and dancing, but unfortunately, Kyuk Young couldn't lift the heavy camera. Apologizing for her inability to record, Kyuk Young explained the situation to the dungeon master. Meanwhile, Elku's caretaker was left wondering who she could ask for help. She tried seeking assistance from the spirit masters, but they only listened to Li Jian Wu. Suddenly, an idea struck the dungeon master. The following day, Li Jian Wu, Hawa, and Kaun were no longer at the spring welcoming party. They had already returned to Li Jian Wu's house. Li Jian Wu's mother questioned their early departure and he explained the circumstances that led to their decision. It was clear that attending the party was not an option for them. Li Jian Wu's father became angry, blaming Khan for the situation. Feeling unsupported at home, Li Jian Wu found solace in the presence of Hawa and Kaun. They embraced him, as he felt they were the only ones on his side. Li Jian Wu also invited them to continue practicing gymnastics together. After completing their preparations for the scheduled activities, Li Jian Wu and Khan were puzzled by the absence of Hawa. They searched for Hawa and eventually found her near the cowshed, gazing at something. A notification popped up, providing information about the hell plant buds. These buds are a unique agricultural product with a dark history. Rumors suggest that this plant has the ability to transport anything to hell. Observing the plant consuming small insects, Li Jian Wu was skeptical. He extended a small twig towards the plant, only to have it bitten by the hell plant shoots. Shocked, Li Jian Wu, Kan, and Hawa retreated behind him. The plant devoured the twig, prompting the same notification to appear once more. Upon observing the shoots of the hell plant, Li Jian Wu pondered the possibility of his hand being devoured by them if they were hands instead of branches. Sensing the danger posed by the plant, Li Jian Wu contemplated relocating it. Subsequently, Li Jian Wu, accompanied by Kaun and Hawa, transported the hell plant shoots to the rice field dungeon. Upon reaching the farmland dungeon, Li Jian Wu was puzzled by the absence of a welcoming gesture from Elku. They promptly sought out Elku, only to discover her engrossed in capturing Kyuk Young's various poses with her camera. Li Jian Wu promptly reprimanded Elku for being oblivious to their presence. Elku clarified that she was filming a video for upload on MeTube, which she intended to name Kuntu. Li Jian Wu expressed confusion regarding MeTube, to which Elku was surprised by his lack of knowledge. Subsequently, Li Jian Wu reviewed the video footage intended for upload on MeTube. Despite initial reservations, Li Jian Wu decided to permit the videos for upload, considering that the farmland dungeon appeared ordinary and videos featuring monsters were becoming increasingly common. However, he cautioned against revealing the stone bee nest and unique agricultural products. Elku assured that editing was possible. It became evident that Elku possessed a profound understanding of cell phones, unlike Li Jian Wu, who struggled with smartphones. Recognizing Elku's potential, Li Jian Wu offered assistance and expressed readiness to sponsor Kyung Tube. Elku responded with enthusiasm, expressing determination to achieve the gold button. Thus, the legend of Kyung Tube commenced. Li Jian Wu decided to take a break from his farming duties in the farmland dungeon. As he took a moment to relax, thoughts of Min Seorin and Dolso crossed his mind. Despite Min Seorin assuring him that everything was fine, Li Jian Wu couldn't help but feel guilty because of Kaun. In an attempt to make amends, he planned to send her some of his agricultural products as an apology. Returning to his daily routine, Li Jian Wu observed El Ku and Kyuk Young engrossed in their smartphones. Frustrated, he scolded them for constantly being glued to their screens. 
He even went as far as threatening to confiscate their phones if they didn't change their behavior. Upon hearing this, El Ku quickly put her phone away and expressed her remorse to Hawa. She admitted that she had been preoccupied with her thoughts. Lee Jian Wu then inquired if being a content creator was like that. Kyuk Young chimed in, wondering if the horned rabbit was unpopular. Lee Jian Wu responded, acknowledging that it might be the case, but he also encouraged Kyuk Young for making it this far. Elku and Kyuk Young sought Lee Jian Wu's permission to create beauty content and were granted the opportunity to consume Arium's leaves. Lee Jian Wu gave his approval. Kyuk Young's beauty in the video went unnoticed, which left her feeling disheartened. Lee Jian Wu, like a wise farmer, explained to Kyuk Young that just like planting seeds, the fruits of their labor wouldn't be harvested overnight. He reminded her that even though poison fish gained recognition through their hard work, it would be meaningless if people didn't know about it. The most important thing, according to Lee Jian Wu, was that Kyuk Young and El Ku had put their utmost effort into it. He assured her that with such dedication, everyone would eventually come to know about their work. Encouraged by his words, Kyuk Young eagerly prepared for the next video. However, Li Jian Wu reminded her not to neglect farming poison fish. He then proceeded to transplant the hell plant shoots into the rice field dungeon, where it thrived and even sprouted leaves. Although the plant consumed anything within its reach, it showed no reaction to objects larger than its buds. Despite this, Li Jian Wu cautioned others to stay away from it due to its dangerous nature. He also instructed the spirits to remain vigilant and keep a watchful eye on him. Li Jian Wu commenced documenting his observations regarding his plant inferno. As he reached for a pen nestled in his trousers, it inadvertently slipped out and plummeted to the ground. Swiftly, the pen was seized and devoured by the hellish plant. Li Jian Wu pondered upon the fact that the pen's dimensions were akin to that of a tree branch, yet despite being a specialized agricultural product, this plant consumed iron. This led Li Jian Wu to conclude that the hellish plant was undeniably perilous. Suddenly, the sound of El Ku's voice resonated. El Ku exclaimed that Mr. Jian Wu was unwell. El Ku, who was supporting Hawa's body, also revealed something held in Hawa's hand. Adjacent to the stone bee nest, they discovered a lifeless stone. Li Jian Wu realized that he had been neglectful in caring for the stone bees, as many of them had died. Feeling remorseful, he apologized to the swarm for not paying enough attention to their well-being. To honor the deceased stone bees, he ordered Hawa to summon the fire spirit to cremate them. As the flames engulfed the fallen bees, Li Jian Wu and his companions offered prayers, hoping that they would find peace in a better place. In the midst of this solemn moment, Hawa presented something unexpected to Li Jian Wu a magic stone. This stone possessed unique powers and was a rare find among monsters. Not only were magic stones environmentally friendly, but they also served as valuable resources for various purposes, ranging from powerful weapons to everyday items. Li Jian Wu was astonished by this unexpected discovery as the magic stone emerged from the body of a deceased stone bee. Notifications have appeared indicating that the magic stone possessed by the stone bee is classified as Class E. The magic stone held by the stone bee contains a pure magical energy, albeit in limited quantities. Li Jian Wu was surprised to learn about the existence of such small magic stones for the first time. Since this magic stone was left behind by the stone bees, Li Jian Wu was eager to discover its practical applications. At Li Jian Wu's residence, his parents were lavishing attention on Hawa and Kaun. Observing this, Li Jian Wu felt that his parents were overlooking their worried son. Despite his father's reassurance that they had faith in Li Jian Wu's abilities, Li Jian Wu couldn't shake the feeling that his parents were more interested in playing with Hawa and Kaun. The following day, Yuna arrived at Li Jian Wu's house with her attendants in response to Li Jian Wu's invitation. At Li Jian Wu's residence, Hawa served chilled beverages to both Yuna and her servant. Yuna expressed her admiration for Hawa's kindness and intelligence. Hawa, mimicking Su Chan's gestures, invited Yuna to join in the drink. Yuna found this amusing and laughed. 
Li Jianwu speculated that Hawa had learned this from Sushan. Li Jianwu himself also partook in the drink offered by Hawa. As he sipped it, he noticed its thickness and inquired about the amount of honey Hawa had added. Judging by Hawa's expression, it was evident that a substantial quantity of honey had been used. Li Jian Wu mentioned that 90% rock bee honey is delicious, but it becomes tingly if it's too thick. Luna informed Li Jian Wu that the stone bee honey would be ready soon. Li Jian Wu expressed his gratitude towards her. However, Li Jian Wu clarified that he contacted Luna today not because of that, but because of the magic stone. Li Jian Wu proceeded to show the magic stone he possessed. Luna mistook the magic stone for a gem. A notification popped up revealing a sparkling magic stone owned by a new bee, Class E. Magic stones possessed by stone bees contain a very pure magic power, but they are quite rare. Luna inquired if stone bees were creatures that possessed magic stones, to which the attendant responded that he had never heard of such beings. Li Jian Wu also inquired about how to diminish its power and the appropriate method to utilize it. Luna explained that it would be challenging due to the class of this magic stone. Li Jian Wu appeared slightly disheartened upon hearing this. Yuna's maid interjected their conversation, advising Li Jian Wu not to lose hope too soon. Luna's maid mentioned that Miss Luna seemed to have entered the Swithnia. Yuna persuaded Li Jian Wu to entrust the matter to her. She vowed to risk her reputation as a necromancer to produce the best outcome. A few days later, Li Jianwu noticed a significant increase in Kyungtube views. The comments were quite diverse, with one suggesting that Kyukyungi should be burned, which Li Jianwu found disturbing. Without hesitation, Li Jianwu blocked the account. While Li Jianwu was preoccupied with his phone, Elku reminded him to focus on work and not spend too much time on his device. Elku warned Li Jianwu that he might become addicted to his phone if he continued to use it excessively while working or sleeping. Taking El Ku's advice to heart, Li Jian Wu promptly stashed his phone in his pocket and resumed his work in the rice field dungeon. Li Jian Wu believed that for Yuna's sake, he should harvest diligently. He also hoped to see Ariam's flowers bloom again, preventing El Ku and Kyukyung from picking them all. The group eagerly began the harvest, with Kyungyung expressing a desire to help. However, Li Jian Wu explained that Arayam's flowers were too high for Kyuk Young to reach, instructing her to take a break instead. They proceeded with the harvest joyfully, with Li Jian Wu finding the most enjoyment in the act of harvesting. As they finished gathering the last of the Arayam, a notification appeared, revealing the Arayam fruit to be of Class S. This fruit, nurtured by farming and dungeon spirits, contained abundant dungeon energy and possessed properties that promoted hair growth and vitality. Li Jian Wu was certain that Yuna would appreciate it. Min Xioran operates a research institute dedicated to studying monsters. The institute is strategically located in a remote area devoid of human presence for safety reasons, nestled within the confines of a mountain. Despite her focus on researching stone bees, Min Xioran finds herself grappling with a different kind of unease, matters of the heart. Thoughts of Li Jian Wu occupy her mind, although she dismisses them, believing he is already married and that such distractions are unwarranted. Seeking solace, Min Xioran visits the Mason Bee Farm and inquires about the bees' well-being from the farm supervisor. The stone bees, confined and agitated, react negatively towards her. Min Xioran realizes her inability to control the bee's aggressive behavior without Dolso's presence, leading her to question her beekeeping skills and Xinhua Group's success in the field. The mason bees in Mugyuri, under Chef Yong Suchan's care, exhibit no hostility, hinting at their high quality. During the boat party, Min Xioran had no luck finding any information about stone bees. Her steps came to a halt when she noticed Dolso sleeping, which caused her to worry. Annoyed, Min Seorin immediately woke Dolso up and lifted him. Startled, Dolso quickly jumped out of Min Seorin's arms and asked why she was making such a fuss. Min Seorin expressed her disappointment, questioning why Dolso was being so cold towards her as a partner. She also complained to Dolso about the stone bees not paying attention to her words. However, Dolso seemed indifferent to Min Seorin's complaints and instead 
took out his cell phone from his four-dimensional bag to take selfies. Observing Dolso's behavior, Mincioran asked why he was more concerned about Metube than her. The four-dimensional bag caught Mincioran's attention as she knew Dolso could store anything in it. Dolso's expression appeared upset. Mincioran glanced at Dolso's cell phone and discovered that his Metube account had been blocked by the channel manager. She questioned Dolso about what he had done to have his account blocked. Dolso explained that he had recently left a comment stating that something plump was delicious. According to Mincioran, it was considered sexual harassment, so she found it strange that it hadn't been blocked earlier. Dolso managed to persuade Mincioran to borrow her cell phone. Dolso's intention was to use Mincioran's cell phone to watch Metube. However, Mincioran declined the request. Instead, Mincioran accessed Metube and viewed content from Kyungtube. To her surprise, Mincioran came across a video featuring a rabbit with horns. According to Mincioran, horned rabbits are known for their high aggressiveness, making them difficult to tame. Not only that, but they are also popular subjects for shooting videos on Metube. Mincioran let out a sigh, feeling left behind. Dolso advised Mincioran not to feel down and to just enjoy watching Maytube. Mincioran reclined on the sofa and invited Dolso to join her in watching Maytube. It was a moment Mincioran had never imagined. The envy inducing existence was now closer than she had thought, and so it went. Intrigued by Kyungtube videos, Mincioran decided to subscribe to Kyungtube. New fans of Kyungtube emerged. New fans of Kyungtube emerged. In the representation of Korean superhuman husband and wife, Park Jung-hyuk and Jung Soo Jin are the first to come to mind worldwide. Their children, Park Yejun and Park Yeran, naturally garnered attention. Lately, Park Yejun has been sighing frequently. When his colleague called him Mr. Ice Prince and inquired about his sighing, Park Yejun requested not to be addressed as such. His colleague believed the nickname suited him due to its similarity to his mother's nickname. Park Yejun questioned how his colleague knew about this. It was when Park Yejun's mother brought him a guild and visited him that his partner realized. Park Yejun explained that he did not wish to live in the shadow of his parents and preferred a more original nickname like Captain. This angered Park Yejun's partner, who felt mocked. You judge based on appearances alone remarked Park Yejun's colleague, urging Park Yejun to leave for work immediately. His colleague noted his diligence, but criticized his severe insubordination as hindering his progress. If only he could overcome this, Park Yejun would advance quickly. A crowd had gathered, and Park Yejun arrived slightly behind schedule. Park Yejun possessed the unique ability to manipulate ice, just like his mother. However, he had a deep concern that he was merely a replica of his mother. Consequently, instead of relying solely on his ice manipulation, Park Yejun preferred to focus on his ability to summon spirits. He made the decision to live his life as a spirit controller, commanding and guiding these ethereal beings. Summoning a spirit, a bird-shaped entity materialized before Park Yejun. This spirit, named Hawk Ice, became his loyal companion. Despite his proficiency in controlling spirits, Park Yejun lacked the ability to communicate with them. Instructing Hawk Ice, Park Yejun ordered an immediate reconnaissance mission. Without hesitation, Hawk Ice ventured into the depths of the dungeon world. Park Yejun retrieved a silver gem from his belongings, which transformed into a screen connected to Hawk Ice's vision. Through this connection, Park Yejun observed the dungeon's surroundings. According to Hawk Ice's vision, the dungeon was classified as a low-level F. Perplexingly, there were no signs of any monsters within. Puzzled by this revelation, Park Yejun questioned the captain about the necessity of spying on the dungeon. The captain advised him to continue with the reconnaissance and remain vigilant. However, Park Yejun argued that they had already confirmed the absence of monsters through various artifacts. As the captain pondered the situation, he realized the truth. This seemingly low-level F dungeon was devoid of any monsters. The captain issued an order for an individual to promptly inform the Hunter Association about the presence of a Deep Earth Worm dungeon. The Deep Earth Worm is a repulsive creature resembling an oversized worm. 
Despite its resemblance to the famous sandworm, this monster is small enough to be crushed by a child, hence classified as F. The creature's size and the land it inhabits are both small, with the land being renowned for its fertility and agricultural research. The deep earth worm itself poses no threat. The real issue lies with the deep mole. The deep mole has a penchant for the deep earth worm, often creating dungeons nearby and causing havoc by damaging crops. Meanwhile, in Li Jianwu's farm area, he invited Hawa and Kaun to join him. They rode a cow and ventured out, only to stumble upon a group of people gathered nearby. Curious, Li Jianwu approached the crowd to inquire further. It turned out that a deep earthworm dungeon had appeared at the village entrance. The informant happened to be Phone, who also mentioned that Yuna was absent, and she was there to address the sudden problem. Upon hearing this, Hawa became despondent. Observing Hawa's gloomy demeanor, Li Jianwu attempted to uplift her spirits by suggesting that they play with Yuna's brother at the next available opportunity. In addition, Li Jianwu inquired about Phone's presence and the reason for the appearance of a dungeon. Phone explained that this dungeon held great significance for Miss Yuna. Furthermore, Li Jianwu's parents had arrived earlier to witness the emergence of the dungeon and informed him that hunters had come to attack it. Urging Li Jianwu to join them and witness the situation firsthand, his father's unexpected presence surprised him. However, Li Jianwu declined stating that it would be impolite to intrude on the working hunters and criticized Li Jianwu for bringing popcorn from Manalagi. Phone responded by revealing that the popcorn was actually prepared for Li Jianwu's parents. This revelation left Li Jianwu astonished. Phone further explained that due to the sudden nature of the event, organizing the entire village would have been challenging, so they decided to turn it into a spectacle. Concerned about the hunter's well-being, Li Jianwu questioned the potential issues arising from the spectacle. Phone reassured him that there would be no problems, as Xinhua Group had sponsored potions for the hunters, indicating their professionalism. This prompted Li Jianwu to consider preparing honey water for the hunters once they had finished. The captain's stomach suddenly churned as he and Park Yajun questioned the arrival of the Xinhua Group. The presence of the Xinhua group seemed to have caused discomfort for the captain. He was determined not to make any mistakes in front of such a prestigious group. Park Yejun, on the other hand, saw this as an opportunity to impress the Xinhua group with just an F-class dungeon. As a hunter reported that the artifact had reacted, signaling the imminent monster wave, Park Yejun sprang into action. The captain, in turn, reminded Park Yejun to stay vigilant. Shortly after, the monster wave began, with the deep earthworm attempting to burrow into the ground. The hunters swiftly intervened, preventing the deep earthworm from advancing. With the help of hawk ice, the hunters managed to effectively stop the deep earthworm, and things seemed to be going smoothly. However, Park Yejun's initial confidence turned into carelessness as a deep earthworm breached the defense line, causing chaos. Meanwhile, Li Jian Wu was at home preparing stone bee honey water for the hunters, packing it into large bottles. After completing the preparation, Li Jian Wu asked Kaun to deliver the honey water to the hunters at the dungeon near the village entrance. As Kaun was about to leave, Li Jian Wu spotted Hawa holding a deep earth worm, leaving him puzzled about its proximity to his house. Li Jian Wu swiftly took hold of the deep earth worm from Hawa's grasp. Subsequently, he extended an invitation to Kaun and Hawa to accompany him to the farmland dungeon, with the deep earth worm in tow. Elku and Kyuk Young warmly welcomed them as well. Elku's astonishment was immediate upon witnessing the deep earth worm coiled around Li John Wu's hand. Li John Wu endeavored to explain the situation to Elku and Kyuk Young. However, Elku and Kyuk Young were already in a state of panic. Elku inquired of Li Jian Wu whether the creature was truly harmless. Li Jian Wu further clarified that he himself had been taken aback when the deep earth worm was in Hawa's possession. Initially, Li Jian Wu had intended to eliminate it, as the hunters had lost track of it. Yet, the deep earth worm spoke to Li Jian Wu, beseeching his assistance. Li Jian Wu comprehended its words and surmised that the deep earth worm was a domesticated animal.
Elku also began to interact with the deep earthworm and found it endearing. Elku also expressed concern that the deep earthworm posed a danger as it gave rise to the deep mole. Elku had seen this on Metube. However, Li Jian Wu reassured him that everything would be fine. According to Li Jian Wu, as long as there was a paddy field dungeon and Elku, the problem would be resolved. Elku had a brilliant notion. Indeed, the only remaining task is to prevent the deep mole from infiltrating the deep earth worm dungeon. Li Jian Wu conversed with the deep earth worm, informing it that the farmland dungeon is now its new abode. Without hesitation, the deep earth worm promptly entered the farmland dungeon. With the arrival of the deep earth worm in the farmland dungeon, it signifies the addition of another member to the dungeon's inhabitants. Elku also cautioned that if the deep earth worm remains in the farmland dungeon, the hunters will face difficulties and will persist in their search for it. As Li Jian Wu realized his mistake, the hunters who attacked the deep earth worm dungeon became even more occupied. One hunter reported to the captain about the artifact reaction, indicating the commencement of the deep mole dungeon monster wave. The captain, in turn, instructed all the hunters to prepare themselves and reminded them to avoid any errors. Meanwhile, Park Yajun remained despondent. As the deep mole emerged from the dungeon, the hunters readied themselves for an attack. Suddenly, from behind, Park Yajun swiftly stepped forward to confront Dave Mole. Utilizing his ice ability, Park Yajun faced Dave Mole head on. Thanks to Park Yajun's contribution, the assault on the Deep Mole dungeon concluded faster than anticipated. The captain felt relieved that it finished sooner than expected and commended Park Yajun's abilities. Despite his youth, Park Yajun's talent was evident. From behind the captain, Li Jianwu suddenly greeted, surprising the captain. Li Jianwu offered honey water to be distributed to the hunters, for which the captain expressed gratitude. The captain promptly distributed the honey water provided by Li Jianwu. In his heart, Li Jianwu wondered if this gesture could serve as his apology. He brewed the honey water much thicker than usual, hoping that the hunters would enjoy it. Li Jianwu then called for Hawa to depart, only to realize that Hawa was not by his side, but playing with Park Yajun's spirit bird, which perched on Hawa's head. Park Yajun, upon noticing this, rushed over and apologized. Witnessing Hawk Ice following Hawa, and bonding with him, Park Yajun realized Hawa's talent as a spirit controller and felt jealous. He also apologized to Li Jian Wu, fearing that he was responsible for any future appearance of a deep mole dungeon in the village. However, Li Jian Wu reassured Park Yajun and explained that it was all due to the deep earth worm incident. Li Jian Wu and Hawa bid farewell and swiftly departed from Park Yajun. The captain inquired Park Yajun and let out a sigh, acknowledging him as the most valuable contributor to the treacherous mole dungeon. Park Yajun's spirits dampened once again as he realized the magnitude of the problem caused by him. The captain reassured Park Yajun that this was not solely his fault, but rather a collective responsibility of all the members in our guild. He urged Park Yajun not to shoulder the burden alone. The captain conveyed a message to Park Yajun, emphasizing the importance of learning from this experience and avoiding the repetition of the same mistake in the future. Park Yajun expressed gratitude for the captain's words and inquired if the current location was indeed where the deep mole dungeon appeared. The captain confirmed it to be true. Filled with determination, Park Yajun swiftly consumed all the honey water in his glass and made the decision to remain in the village taking full responsibility for his errors. A few days had passed since the incident with the Deep Earth Worm Dungeon. Li Jian Wu received news from the village chief that some hunters had settled in their village. These hunters had decided to stay in the village, fearing the sudden appearance of the Deep Mole. Upon hearing this, Li Jian Wu was taken aback. He couldn't help but feel a sense of guilt. The village chief handed him a list of the hunters residing in the village. Li Jian Wu examined the list alongside Hawa and Kaun. They pointed out the photos of the hunters on the list. Li Jian Wu was astonished to find familiar faces among the hunters. 
The list included Min Sjorin with Dolso and Park Yejun with Hawk Ice. As Min Sjorin was engrossed in watching Kyung Tube, a message arrived from the Hunter Association. Min Sjorin expressed annoyance as he believed he had already retired and yet was still being contacted by the association. Curiosity got the better of him, so he opened the message and was taken aback by its contents. It turned out to be a recruitment announcement for hunters, specifically for the challenging Mugieri's Deep Mole Dungeon. Upon receiving the message, Min Seorin couldn't help but wonder if it was truly Mugieri who had managed to succeed in stone bee farming, as he had envisioned. However, Min Seorin hesitated to investigate Mugyur further, fearing that Xinhua Group might label him if he proceeded without a proper strategy. If Min Sioran were to participate in the investigation incognito, no one would suspect his true intentions. He saw this as a golden opportunity bestowed upon him by a higher power. Filled with excitement, Min Sioran eagerly shared her plans with Dolso, seeking his support. With newfound determination, Min Sioran registered as a hunter who would settle in Mugieri. Meanwhile, Dolso observed her with a longing to continue watching Kyung Tube alone. To Lee Jian Wu's surprise, the retired Min Sioran also decided to join. Although Lee Jian Wu felt guilty, he resolved to at least provide them with potatoes. Notification displayed a top quality potato, a tender potato with a moist texture, nurtured by spiritual beings. Lee Jian Wu felt elated at successfully cultivating A grade crops without relying on Hawa's assistance. The remaining harvest consisted of B plus and B grade produce. Li Jian Wu's skills had clearly improved. If he could achieve such high results, how skilled must Hawa be to reach his level? Suddenly, a voice was heard cautioning against running recklessly. It was Yuna and her attendant who had arrived. Li Jian Wu inquired about the reason for Yuna's haste. Yuna wasted no time in asking Li Jian Wu if he had indeed harvested a Rayum Class S. Li Jian Wu confirmed it prompting Yuna to express her gratitude by embracing him. Startled, Li Jian Wu called out to Yuna, causing her cheeks to flush as she realized she was hugging him. Li Jian Wu then informed Hawa about Yuna's brother's arrival. To his surprise, he noticed hawk ice hovering above Yuna's head. The guest had arrived earlier than expected.